for them. Yeah, but very unfortunate. Still got to play the schedule, and here they come tonight, facing a Tigers offense that has been unbelievable. Yeah, I, this is a uh, this is a really tough matchup for Barcelona, a team that. Uh, you know, unfortunately, they've lost multiple senior starters yeah. to season-ending injuries in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, they've, they've lost, uh, you know, a, a shocking amount of players to injury, and it's really affected the uh, product on the field for the team. I, you have to feel bad for Coach Jeff Barth and his staff. This, this you know, if you, if you kind of go back, you know, the, the top layer and, and take a real deep look at this program, this has been one of the most successful programs. Uh, like Beachwood, yeah. very successful. They just haven't gotten to, you know, they haven't been able to get to, you know, st uh, state championship games. But, you know, Coach Jeff Barth has done such a great job since. Uh, and since he's their he's, only coach, right? Well, they, they started in 2008 with uh, right. Woody McMillan, that's who right. is now at, uh, at Ludlow. That's right. He, uh, he stepped down after one year. Uh, Jeff Barth took over, and Barth has been there since this is his 15th season. Fantastic. Um, I mean, and, and the success he's had has been remarkable. So this is very difficult different for this football team in this community uh, you have to feel really bad for them because if they would have you know I think it's going to be very hard for them to compete in this game tonight this is not a team that moves the ball well at all yeah. they're only averaging 17 points a game uh, you know they their only wins have been against very two teams that have been struggling this year and Holmes and Bishop Brossert uh, and they've been beat pretty pretty soundly by uh, Newport Central Catholic, Kentucky Country Day, and Bracken County last week. Uh, you know, unfortunately, they uh, it's going to be a really brutal draw for them tonight. They have to play this Beachwood Tigers team that's just hitting on all cylinders. Yes, sir. Um, you know, led, of course, by Clay Hayden and that just incredibly effective passing attack. Uh, of course, uh, you know, also leading the way there, the uh, incredible trio of receivers in, town, um, in, uh, in Luke Erdman, uh, yeah. James Cusick, and, of course, freshman Tyler Fryman. Um, you know, I expect this to be much, much like last week's game uh, against Gallatin County. Um, you know, I, unfortunately, again, just a, a really tough, tough timing to to have all these injuries and then have to face one of the best teams in two way in the Beachwood Tigers. For no, no doubt about it, Murph. And the Beachwood Tigers come here led by quarterback Clay Hayden, who's only throwing Murph, only completing 72 percent of his passes. Incredible. Yeah. Third in the state. 72 percent of completion, only two interceptions in 115 completions, 1909 yards on the year. 22 touchdowns and 318 yards per game. That's 22 touchdowns in six games. He's been unbelievable. You could say this offense is really top to bottom as good as anyone in the entire state. Yeah, number four in the state uh, right now, 43.8 points per game. And you, they just, they're efficient, they're powerful, yep. they're fast, they're electric, they, they can do it all. They can run, they can throw, uh, you know, it, it, and it's just, again, as we started, we started saying this in, in week one versus Cincinnati McNicholas, uh, there's just so many weapons on this team. How do you defend this team? You defend this team with a set, you've got your top three receivers, but then you've also got Talon Linder, yeah, who's sure. who's shown flashes of brilliance this year, along with uh, you know an emerging tight end in Luke Sleet. You've yeah. got uh, you've got of course Chase Flaherty, who's just a you know, great running back that can also now showing how well he can catch the ball yes. in the backfield. Yet yeah, for Walton Vernon, how do you defend that? Yeah, how? good luck. You know you can double team Fryman, you can double team. Uh, Erdman, but then you've got you've got Linder, uh, Linder, Sleet, and and Cusick that can that can do just as much as the other the other yeah. two. I mean, it's just such an impressive offense. Coach Hargett and Coach Volker, uh, Bob Burnett, they did such an incredible job with this offense this year. Fantastic to watch. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We're ready for kickoff. Beachwood in their home red jerseys. Colson Lair will kick off. Three beat uh, Walton Verona Bearcats deep. Tyson Smith. Dalton and Mr. Diop is back for the Walton Verona Bearcats. The kick will be going to Trace Dalton. Trace takes it to the 15, turns it upfield to the 20. He has a hole. 25-30. Oh 35-40. He's got one guy to beat. He's up the midfield, down to the 40, knocked out of bounds. Nice return there to start this off for Walton Verona by Trace Dalton. Picked up a wall of blockers, Murphy, at about the 20-yard line. Cut it up on the left and was gone. Yeah, uh, Cohen Henderson with the uh, with the tackle there on special teams, uh, you know, to save a potential touchdown. Great start for Walton sure Verona. That's got to give that program, uh, you know, which again has been struggling, you know, a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, excitement on the sidelines. You can see they're pumped up. Big start for Walton Verona. Well, Walton Verona is going to take over first and ten in Beachwood territory, all the way down to the Beachwood 37-yard line. 
coming out. Walton Vernon and a shotgun. One back in the backfield. Two receivers to his left. Quarterback takes a snap and fumbles oh, it. All wow. the way back to midfield. Has to fall on it. That's a loss of at least 10 yards. Just about 10 yards here on first down. It'll be second and a lot. Yeah, it, it, this is uh, this is a, a, an unfortunate situation. Last week, uh, you know, they had to turn to uh, uh, freshman Blake Gamble and uh, junior running back Carter Daniels to play quarterback. They lost starter Jackson Smith several yeah. weeks ago, a uh, senior who was a really nice two-way quarterback. Uh, now they're just trying to figure out who is going to play quarterback. Avery Howe was in there. Now he was in the shotgun there, and the ball got snapped past him. It's going to be second down. Call it 22 for one run at the Beachwood 49. They come back out again in the shotgun. Two receivers in the backfield. Two receivers to his left as well. One to the right. Snap comes back, hands it to the jet sweep coming through, and he is nailed for another two-yard loss. All the way back in the beach, uh, Walton Verona territory, Chase Flaherty in on the tackle. Nice hit. Yeah, and again, this uh, this uh, this team that was only able to uh, to muster 126 yards of total offense last week in a 35-7 loss to Bracken County, uh, you know, they, they just they, they can't. They're having a hard time moving the ball because they're without their main players. And, again, similar to Gallatin County last week, this is an offensive line that is not – uh, build to handle a front seven like Beachwood yeah. uh, brings, you know, week in, week out. So, again, just a tough matchup for Walton tonight. Again, Avery Howe in the shotgun. Joined by a back in the backfield. He takes it, rolls, looks to his right, throws deep downfield into double coverage. Linder with the interception. Saw that coming. Talon stepped in front from the safety position. Fantastic job. Yeah, just, a, you know, again, uh, you know, this team not built to throw the ball, especially to throw it down the field. And right there, Talon, Talon Linder, you know, brings in an underthrown pass down the right sideline. Uh, so great play to uh, for Beachwood's defense to start after allowing a pretty pretty long kickoff return. And that's Talon's third interception on the year. Leads the team from his left safety position. Clay Hayden will come out to lead the Tigers' offense on their first possession. Beachwood takes over first and ten on their own 24-yard line. Clay Hayden is often in the shotgun again. Two receivers to either side. Chase Flaherty joins him in the backfield. Clay gets a snap, looks to his left, throws deep downfield, and Urban is open, and oh, Ooh, man. just overthrown. Urban, and I don't think it was Clay's fault, Urban got hung up a bit on our 48-yard line. Him and the Walton, Walton Verona defender got kind of tied up. Ball was just slightly overthrown. Yeah, Good pass, I, I, yeah. Had they had he uh, thrown it, you know, even just a little bit ahead of, of Urban, that's a uh, that's a 76-yard touchdown right there. I, and again, you know. I, to, to deal with this kind of speed, you have yeah. to have corners that not only can be physical, but can run like the wind. No and uh, well, I think Walton a little short in that area right now, so watch for that attempt again later in this drive. Second down and 10, Tigers from their own 24. Three receivers to Hayden's left, and he's going to pitch it to Urban on a sweep, and he's got some room. Gets up to 20, 25, 30, and goodbye. 40, 50, track, yeah, he's not gonna meet, be caught. speed, Goodness 30, gracious. 20. 4-3-2-1 touchdown, Urban on a 76-yard touchdown run. Or no, that was a pass. He flipped it forward. Yep. That's a pass. Yep. Wow. Yeah, just a, uh, you know, a, a show of speed and toughness. Uh, you know, Luke uh, gets that uh, that shuffle pass, so to speak, yeah. uh, right right uh, behind the center and right wow. guard and just turns on the burners, gets a, a nice block. I didn't see who the block was on the right side, yeah. but a block to open up the edge. And once he hit that edge, he was gone. Good uh, Again, night. that's you know, one of the top sprinters yeah, in KHSA in State. State, <laughs> won, State won a uh, track meet last year. He came in second. Good yeah. luck defending this. No doubt. Out. Colson Lair out for the extra point. It is up and good. With nine minutes, 50 seconds, 57 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Beachwood 7, Walton Verona nothing. Thanks for tuning in on this senior night. Had a lot of seniors introduced prior to the game. The uh, football seniors, the cheerleading seniors, and the band seniors. That? It was a big group. It was great to see. Had some people out here early. The hamburgers are cooking. You cannot oh, get so a good. better night they're of so football good. for football tonight. Thanks everyone again for tuning in. Beachwood 7. Walton Verona, nothing, 9.57 left to go first quarter. We're live on YouTube on the World Wide Web, that? Murph. Yeah, Look how that, far we've come. It's on the Internet. <laughs> that uh, was Luke Erdman's third rushing touchdown of the season. He has eight receiving touchdowns. That now gives him 11 wow. in only six games in a couple of minutes. What a year for Luke Erdman. He's and again, I just, you know, it, the speed kills, yeah. but he's not just speed. He's toughness. Yeah, no he's doubt. intelligence. He's, you know, he 
he's just he, he really is a a one of the most well-rounded football players you'll ever find. He's got the DNA. He's got he's got a family full of football players. Yeah. His dad was a coach for and, and still coaches. You know, just uh, this, he is a prototypical tough-nosed football player. Colson Lair's kick is fielded by one run and brought out to about their own 26-yard line. Walton will start their second possession of this game. Seven zip Beachwood. Their first possession ended in a Talon Lindner interception. And two plays later, uh, our man Luke Urban is running 76 yards on a touchdown pass. It was kind of a shovel pass. Coming into the, uh, today's game, Luke Urban, 506 yards, 84 yards a game with eight touchdowns. Yeah. Add some to that. No, he's got a nose for the end zone. It yes, he does. Unbelievable. That interception, as you said, that was Talon's third. He leads the Tigers. Fryman has two. The Tigers, one of the top ball hawking teams in the state now with 10 team interceptions. Avery Howe again in the shotgun. He has two backs to either side of him. One receiver comes into motion. Handed off to the back through, and he's got a little bit of room, and that's 22. Ben Teepe, Ben takes it out for a positive yards for one about three yards out to about the 29. Yeah, nice job there. Hey, you know, again, that he, I, I think in order for Wall and Verona to not get this, uh, not to let, get, let this game get too out of control too quickly, they're going to have to be able to establish some kind of running yeah, attack. No doubt. Um, because, you know, if they're if they're – constantly getting off schedule and they have to throw the ball that's just not going to work it's it's going to give the ball right back to Beachwood um, so we'll see how they can do but I think it's going to be tough with this front seven 9 13 to go first quarter seven zip Tigers won't run a second down and seven ball spotted on their own 29 and Mark watch Brody Waddell and just how I, there we go Hand off to the back up the middle there. Ben Teepe again picked up maybe one yard it's going to bring up about a third and six here for Walton Mark, I want you to watch uh, Brody Waddell, number 54. He's playing a kind of a roving linebacker, and we've seen that the last couple of weeks be so effective. Uh, it was effective. He was one of the big reasons we were able to get out in front of Covington Catholic 21 to nothing yeah. so quickly in that big game two weeks ago. Last week, he was just do dominant and, and creating chaos against Gallatin County, and he's doing that here tonight, too. Wait a minute, a Waddell 54. Yeah, have that? we seen that before? I Middle think, linebacker, I think, so. I think we have. Howe again in the shotgun, third and six coming up. Receiver comes into motion across his face. Rolling back out the pass, throws it down the middle, lofts it up. Talon might get a second There's one. There's another does. one. Talon gets a second interception of the game. He picks it up at the 40, Come takes on, it Talon. to the 50. Might be able to take it outside, has a little room all the way down to Walton Vrona. 40-yard line, two passes, two picks for Talon Linder. Yeah, and again, you know, we talked about just the uh, the struggle that, uh, it, you know, it has been for Walton Vrona since losing starting quarterback Jackson Smith. You know, right now they're 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 starting sophomore court, quarterback Avery Howe yeah. his first action of the season and again you know tough spot for yeah, a young sure man is. to have to face a, a Beachwood Tigers squad that has just been so, playing so well and again Tigers come up with the takeaway. Tigers got a first and ten on the Walton Verona forty leading seven to nothing eight eleven to go first quarter handed off to Chase Flaherty second man through it on the I formation Chase nice positive yards takes it all the way down inside of the thirty five down to about the Walton Verona thirty three a nice seven yard carry there for Chase on first down. Yeah, Chase comes into tonight, uh, 57 carries, 261 yards, and five touchdowns. But perhaps more impressively has been the way he's been able to catch the ball out of the backfield this year. Yeah. 22 receptions, 272 yards, and a touchdown. I think Another Chase, weapon. Yeah, yeah. Chase is going to have a good game here tonight, I, I believe. Second down and three, call it. I formation again. Clay under center, two receivers to his right. Clay gets the ball, hands it to the first man through. Xander Riggler, and Xander picks a real positive yard. Says one man to beat. Can't Ooh. get by him. Takes it inside the 20. Nice run there from the fullback, Xander Riggler. Yeah, you don't see that too often yep. in uh, Greg Hergett's, uh his playbook there, but a little fullback. Uh, you know, through the uh, three hole to the left side of the Beachwood offensive line. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not many fullbacks have the kind of speed that Xander Riggler yeah. has. But, uh, you know, he did a great job getting to the next level, made one tackle or miss. And if not for, you know, a, uh, you know, a fortuitous uh, trip up there yeah. with a Walton Verona defender, that would have been a touchdown for Xander. 7.40 to go first quarter, 7 nothing Tigers ball, first and 10 at the Walton Verona 18. Clay Hayden again on our center, eye formation. Talon Linder lines up to his left, one receiver to his right. Clay gets the ball, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. He's wide open receiver. Xander yeah. Riggler to 10. He's going to cut it around. Gets some oh, hits man, he's at fighting. the three. He's, he's almost fighting. getting in there. They're going to spot him down at about the four-yard line, though. Nice catch and run there from Xander Riggler. First and goal, Tigers. 
Yeah, and I like to see this. You know, Xander's had such a nice career with yeah. the Tigers. You know, two years ago, uh, you know, we saw, he, you know, he, he, he got close to 600 yards in mop-up duty yeah. uh, as a sophomore and looked so impressive. Uh, and, you know, last year he was kind of stuck in a situation behind Chase and, yeah. and Mitchell Berger. Uh, but he is he's, he's a young man who could start for 90% of the yeah. uh, of teams in northern Kentucky. No doubt about it. At tailback. First down handoff to Chase Flaherty, 4-3-2-1 touchdown. Flaherty behind Xander Blocken gets his first touchdown of the game. And it's 7-0-1 to go in the first quarter. That'll make the score Beachwood 13, Walton Rona nothing, pending the extra point from our kicker, Colson Lair. Yeah, and that? I look at his stats, 34 from 35 on extra points. Three for three from a field goal, two over 40 yards. I one mean, of the, he's one of the best kickers in Kentucky. Yep. I mean, it's a soft without, one. without a doubt. By the way, that uh, touchdown for Chase, his 25th career rushing nice. touchdown. And the extra point by Mr. Lair, I'm going to start calling him, is up and good. With 7.01 to go in the first quarter, Beachwood 14, Walton Vroon to nothing. Thanks for tuning in on this perfect Friday night for football. Sun went down a little earlier tonight. Great crowd on hand. All the folks came up from Boone County, Southern Boone County, Murph, Walton yeah, Vroon. How about that? I'm yeah, not, not, nice uh, crowd tonight. Yeah, I mean, re really nice. Uh, Walt Verona, again, you know, this is a program that – A young you know, program, is, only had it yeah, for 16 I mean, years. Yeah, I mean, 2008 was their first year. Yep. Again, Woody McMillan, the coach then, the Jeff Barth took over in 2009. How about this? In, 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 just looking at Barth's career in his 15 seasons, uh, as of now, seven consecutive winning seasons, 12 consecutive uh, seasons out of his 14 uh, completed seasons – um, were, or have been winning seasons. Yep. Three seasons of 10 wins or more. Wow. He made the state semifinals in 2018. Uh, unfortunately, they fell short to Mayfield 38 to seven. Um, you know, in five, uh, you know, five seasons where they made it to at least round three. I mean, he yep. has done a great job. Colson Lair with the kick. Deep kick again, fielded by the center back Tyson Smith for Walton Verona. Here he comes. He's up to the 25-30. Their best play of the game was on the opening kickoff when they took the ball all the way down into Beachwood territory, but they'll take over this time on their own 30, their third possession of the game. Beachwood leading 14 to nothing, 6.45 to go first quarter. Yeah, and that tackle on, on the uh, kickoff there was by Patrick Weaver, senior Patrick Weaver. is yeah. uh, showing himself to be one of the, uh, one of the several uh, main special teams players for the Tigers this year, so nice job by him there. Brody Waddell is a big kid, isn't he? Yes, he he's is. He's a lot he's bigger a, than man. Is again, he only a sophomore? Only a sophomore. Holy master yeah, He may be a junior. Hold okay. I will have to check that. Walton Vrona in the shotgun again. Avery Howe takes junior. it. Two backs in the back. Receiver comes in motion, hands off to the second back through, and he has a little bit of hold. Takes it out to 35, 40, all the way up to the 45-yard line for Walton Vrona first down. The ball will be spotted on their own 45. Nice carry out yeah. there from Ben Teepee, a good run. Yeah, this, uh, as I alluded to earlier in the broadcast, uh, Walton Verona on the year, the only averaging 17.8 points a game, allowing 26 points a game. Um, heavy, heavy run offense, 66% uh, versus 34% through the air. They average about 145 yards on the ground. But again, a lot of that was starting quarterback, now injured starting quarterback, Jackson Smith, and, yeah. and uh, you know, the great start to his senior year he was having before he was injured. Again, they have a new quarterback in and might run some kind of wildcat. It's not how this time. It's 32, yeah. and a man moved in motion. That's going to cost Walton Verona five yards just after getting their first first down of the game. Guy who stepped in the quarterback there was, I think, Blake Gamble. Blake Gamble, yeah. freshman, uh, who last week against Bracken County, uh, he was four of six uh, for 97 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Coach Barth and his staff really like Blake Gamble, but, again, he's just so young yeah. and so raw. Uh, it's a big, big test for him here, uh, you know, seeing more action on the varsity stage. Looks like they're going to stick with him. Blake Gamble comes out. He gets a call from the Walton Verona OC, and he'll come out here with a first down and 15 after the illegal procedure penalty. 5.46 to go first quarter. Beachwood 14, Walton Verona nothing. Gamble comes out in the shotgun. Two receivers join him in the backfield. Two receivers line up to his right as well. Man comes in motion across his face. Handoff, fumbled, ball, wow. Beachwood might got that. They did. The yeah. Tigers picked that one up. That ball had nowhere to go from the jump. I don't think Gamble ever fielded it cleanly there, Murph. Yeah, just a, and again, right there, just a, the, the Beachwood defensive front, especially the defensive line, Jack Meyer, Brody Waddell, uh, Maddox Kelly, they're just they're dominating up front, and they just they, essentially on that play, they just push, push Walton Verona's offensive line <laughs> into the play, uh, which caused that. So, you know, again, just a, a, a 
really nice defensive effort here tonight. And again, Mark, we talked about last week. You know, these games where you're playing teams that you're you're substantially better than. You know, you as a coaching staff, Jay Volker and his his crew. One of their most important things is don't let the kids play down to their yeah. to the level of the opponent. They're not doing that again tonight. So good job by the coaching staff. No doubt about it. Hayden in the shotgun, three receivers to his left. He looks to his left, throws deep down to. Um, Cusick was wide open in single coverage, just a little overthrown as well. It'll be second down and 10. Ball spotted on the Walton Vroom, the 38. 5.23 to go, clock stop first quarter. Beachwood 14, Walton Vroom to nothing. Thanks, everyone, again for tuning in on senior night. We have one more home game. Or two more. Two more. more. Two yep. more home games and a road game and then finish the year against Bracken here. That'll be fun. In our brand-new district that all these other teams are probably great. We got Beachwood now in our district. So next week, Owen County comes here. Then we travel to Carroll County. And then the final week, Bracken County yes, visits sir. Fort Mitchell. Clay Hayden in a shotgun. Two receivers to his right. Urban comes in motion. Clay gets a snap, looks at Cusick again. Now looks over to his right, has some room, throws it down the middle to Cusick, open in the end zone, touchdown. Wow. Pitch and catch. Beautiful throw by Clay Hayden. Yeah, and, and a great job by the middle of the offensive line. Uh, you know, it, it, he first looked at Cusick on the left side yeah. of the field. There was He didn't like what he saw, but he had so much time because of the protection that Chance Ball, uh, Jack Meyer, Nick Alexander were providing him. He had a nice little pocket there. Yeah. And he was able to find, uh, you know, a wide open uh, Cusick when he, when he broke for the post pattern. Great run, great route by Cusick, great throw again by Clay Hayden. And if you have not seen him throw yet, folks, I mean, he can spin it as good as any high school player in Kentucky. And that's a 38-yard touchdown pass for Q to Cusick. Colson Lair, extra point up and good. Five minutes, 17 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Beachwood 21, Walton Verona nothing. I see, I see, I foresee Murph a running clock in yes, our sir. future. Yes, sir. I, I, I Kind of expected this one just because yeah. of Walt, the, the injuries, injuries Walton yeah. experienced. I think this would have been a much different game if Walton wouldn't have experienced all those injuries. Uh, you know, again, a lot of talent on this team, but a lot of it taken out because of injuries. Uh, for Cusick, that is his sixth touchdown on the season. He eclipses 300 yards receiving. Uh, and again, Mark, you just can't say enough yeah. about this passing attack. I mean, you know, a, a lot of times, you know, a lot, a lot of people will say that, you know, it's hard to – really uh, you know compete for a state title if all you uh, you know if you if you pass so heavily yeah. um, but I, I gotta tell you I, I don't know how you yes. can I, I don't know how you, a lot of times when you hear that it's when a quarterback has one or yep. two receivers but this team has five legitimate yeah. it's actually six legitimate receivers if you count uh, Chase Flaherty and really if you uh, seven if you can't count Z Xander Riggler all right on on behalf of Senior Night, it looks like Senior Luke Fleet Murph is going to take this kickoff. So Luke's right. lining up at his own 30 here. Colson Lair is taking a breather. Luke is out to take the kick, and the crowd sees it, and wow. they're getting ready here. Let's see what he can pull off. Luke Sleet, a good kickoff. Love off. it. Look at this. It's going to Stand bounce bounds. it about Stand the bounds. 18. There we go. And it's a live ball. Walton Verona receiver does fall on it at about the 21-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Walton. That was almost a long onside kick there. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, how fast Brody Eller got down the field? He almost yeah. covered that one. No, nice job there by uh, Luke Sleet, one of the most beloved players on that Tiger sideline. Uh, fantastic young man yes, who sir. has really, really worked hard uh, to become a better football player. He gets bigger, stronger, and faster. Uh, he's he kind of, Mark, I, I'll be honest with you, he's turned himself in a little bit of an Ivan Drago type. <laughs> I mean, he is. Uh, yeah. he, but uh, great to see he's having a great senior year, and uh, congratulations to him and his family on senior night. Walton Verona comes out with Blake Gamble again at uh, quarterback, first and 10 from their own 22. Gamble in the shotgun, hands it off to the left back, and he's going to not really have a lot of room, hand it off to 23. Eli Diop there, and Eli picked up about one yard, call it out to about the 24. Yeah, with the loss of Jackson Smith, who uh, before his injury uh, had 375 yards rushing and five touchdowns on the season. I believe he was injured two weeks ago. Uh, Eli, Eli Diop comes in as the leading rusher for uh, the Bearcats. 24 carries, 112 yards, and a touchdown. Walton will face a second down and nine now. Ball spotted on their own, 28. 21 zip Tigers, 457 to go first quarter. See now, this is they, they've got Brody Waddell and Xavier Campbell rushing on the right side. Oh, hand it off again oh, up to 22. Ben Teepee and the, Whoa, oh, look at the this. ball's out somehow. Picked up by Tyler Fryman. See what the refs say. I guess it was the fumble. Didn't see yeah, it come we, out of it, or he just ripped it away from him. 
Okay, so let me just walk you through what I saw yeah. here. Okay, on the right side, talk about feeling bad for the Bearcats. On the on the on the left side of their offensive line, the right side of our defense, Xavier Campbell, one of the who has moved to middle linebacker this year, was lined up at right defensive end, one of the best pass rushers in the state. Yeah. And Brody Waddell was was lined up and looking like he was gonna blitz on the play. So he did in fact blitz. So that left side of the line was just mauled, Ooh. which didn't help yeah. and, and caused the fumble. Again, the Beachwood front seven playing so well against his team tonight. Wow. And another touchdown for Tyler Fryman. Colson Lair, extra point. It is good. 425 to go. First quarter. Beach with 28. Walton Verona nothing. Thanks for tuning in on this senior night. Luke Sleet, see if he'll take another kickoff here. Luke's done a good job, Murph. You know, he he has uh, 88 yards on four catches. He's had some big catches yes. early in the season yeah. against Simon Kenton and Dixie. So hopefully, you know what? You need to build on these guys yes. all season Absolutely. because of the playoffs. Absolutely. You need Come. everyone showing up in the this playoffs. This is game seven. It's coming yep. quickly. No doubt. Mark Talley, this is the third game or the fourth game ever between uh, Beachwood and Walton Verona. Uh, Beachwood uh, with three wins uh, in this uh, three three and zero oh over Walton Verona. The last game uh, was November nineteenth, two thousand twenty one. Third playoffs. round of the yep. playoffs. Beachwood defeated the Bearcats fifty to six. Cam Herget in that game, two hundred thirty six yards rushing on twelve carries, four touchdowns. Oh, and by the way, he threw two touchdowns uh, to Parker Mason and to Tanner Jackson. Luke's lead again on the kickoff. Another nice kick, bounces oh, it to 21. In. It oh, stays okay. in bounds, fielded by the Walton Verona Bearcats, and he's going to take it out to about the 20 and meet a host of Tigers. You were talking about that quarterback, Cam Herget. Now, was he the quarterback here at Beachwood? I, I think that he was. He for, played a couple for a years. Time. Yeah, I, think I heard he, he was pretty good. Somewhat of an impact. Yeah, I think uh, I heard listen, that kid was good. Cameron Herget, that's just a. You know, a reminder of what a uh, an unbelievable yes. career part, uh, that he that he had uh, during his time here at Beachwood. Cameron Herget, uh, currently the backup quarterback yes. at Eastern Kentucky University. What a bright future he's got for himself at yes, EKU. He does. Uh, you know, we uh, if Cameron, if you're listening, uh, we are so proud of Man, you. We're rooting dude. for you every weekend. Every we, week, we, we we love seeing you in the games yes. for EKU and. Uh, uh, rem remember, we're always thinking about you, buddy. No doubt. First and 10, Walton on their own 22. Hand it off again to the second man. Yeah. Nice hole there. Ben TP picks up some positive yards, takes it all the way out to the 28 of Walton Verona. Second down, second down about five. Yeah, Typey doing a nice job. Uh, Typey, you know, sorry, yeah, I've been calling him Typey. Running, running up the middle. I uh, came in 84 carries on 27 yards and a touchdown. He's a senior. Uh, he's a big young man. Uh, they, you know, they just – he's got to get that – Got to get some sort of uh, movement in the middle of, middle of the uh, his team's offensive line. Otherwise, it's tough for them to even get uh, get the play off. I'm doing a pretty good job, Murph, considering I'm English as a second language. Uh, you're English. doing a yep. fantastic Thank job. Thank you a lot for that. Uh -oh. So, snap again, having trouble with. Can, uh, Gamble takes. He's going to take a loss this time all the way back past the original line of scrimmage, all the way down to the Walton. 20. It'll bring up a third down in about 12 here. 326 to go first quarter. 28 to Beachwood, zero for Walton Verona on this senior night. Mark, the uh, the, the roster that I've got here lists Blake Gamble, the uh, current quarterback, 5'6", 125 pounds. Wow. Freshman. Wow. Tough spot for that yeah. young man, but he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's clearly, uh, you know, if Jeff Barth has him in that situation, that young man's probably quite a warrior. No doubt about it. It's going to be actually third and about 13 almost here for Walton. 2.59 to go in the first quarter, clock running. Gamble in the shotgun, two receivers to either side. Third and long here for Walton. See what they do. The gambles throwing back to pass. Throws to his left. Underthrown a bit, and it'll fall incomplete. Xander Riggler was there. Flag oh, came in okay. late. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're calling there. Nice shot by Xavier Campbell on a little twist stunt there. He came from his right defensive end spot. Looped. Okay. See, yeah. see what they're calling? I think they're going to pick it up. Flag is picked up. Yeah. No penalty there. It'll be fourth and 13 now for Walton. Yeah, nice job by uh, Xavier Campbell. He just looped around into the A gap, uh, and I and, uh, was able to tip that ball. Uh, you know, Blake, <laughs> Blake Campbell with 5'6". Uh, yeah. saw Ooh. Xavier Campbell coming at him, and yeah. uh, he's lucky he didn't get that one picked off. But, uh, you know, again, this you know, this front seven is just absolutely dominating right now in the defensive backfield, cleaning everything up. As nice and as good of a kid as Xavier Campbell is, I don't want him chasing me in a football game. Oh, man. Punt like, gets off. Beachwood Tiger yeah, calls fail, fair catch yeah, that Urban right at midfield. Yeah, the punter got hit oh. there. So, t so uh, you know, what you have there is that snap was a high looping yeah. snap. You don't see that too often, and that caused the – 
uh, you know, the uh, Beachwood pump blockers to get there right when he got it off. They made contact, and let's see what they call. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, so that will be an automatic first down for Walton Verona. See where they spot this ball. They're going to spot it up around their own at Walton's 35-yard line. That's the second first down of tonight's game for Walton. Came on a penalty there. And the Beachwood Tigers defense comes back out leading 28 to nothing. 2.42 to go first quarter. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in on this beautiful football evening. I mean, you know what, Murph? i got to say, man, the weather, I we're know. doing something Listen, right. We've had good weather. Yeah, this is, this is unusually yeah. uh, good weather for, uh, for the end of September, beginning of October. Walton Brown in the shotgun. Gamble again, I believe. Receiver comes in motion. It's not Gamble. It's back over to Avery Howe, and he hands yes. off. Picks up a nice seven-yard pickup out there by Ben Typey. Out to all the way to the uh, Walton Brown, a 42-and-a-half-yard line. Yeah, Ben Typey doing a nice job. I think what's happening is, uh, you know, Walton Verona is good when, when Beachwood's not bringing the pressure, but yeah. when they bring the pressure, it's kind of cause, it's causing breakdowns on the line and, and causing the uh, the backfield to get, get a little bit rattled, which I completely yeah. understand. No <laughs> doubt. Call it second down and two. Walton Verona, the ball spotted on their own, 43. Three receivers come out to Avery Howe's right, one to his left. Xavier Campbell back in middle linebacker. How gets a snap, hands it to the first back through, and he's going to get the first down all the way out to midfield inside Beachwood territory, all the way down to well, the 49. Again, that was Typey again. Good carry. Yeah, nice shot by Typey there. He uh, he avoided a tackle in the backfield. Uh, he would have been taken down for a loss or no gain, but was able to uh, kind of shimmy shimmy to the right to yeah. avoid the tackler and then uh, do what he is doing so well tonight, which is uh, gaining, gaining yards up the middle. First down for Walton, their third of the night, takes it into Beachwood territory on the Beachwood 49. First quarter coming down here, 127 left to go in the first. 28 zip Tigers, total domination so far, but a good drive here for Walton. Again, Avery Howe in the shotgun, receiver comes in motion, hands it to a typey again coming through. Going to pick up about three this time, met by a host of Tigers and Xavier Campbell and Waddell in on the tackle. Yeah, Jack Meyer on the Jack, bottom yeah. of that pile Ooh. there. Uh, but, you know, again, typey. Picking up positive yardage. Two-yard pickup, second down and eight. Walton's got the ball in Beachwood territory. Ball spotted on the Beachwood 47. Mark, this is uh, week two of District 5 play yes. in 2A football. Uh, currently Beachwood, Carroll County, and Bracken County at 1-0. Gallatin, uh, Owen County, and Walt Verona at 0-1. We'll talk more about that later. Yeah, and we got to keep an eye on that Highlands-Dixie yes. score yes. tonight too. Walton again, second down and eight ball on the Beachwood 48. Avery throws over to his left, complete out there to number 30. That'll be Brett Whitehorn. Brett takes it inside the Beachwood 45, down about the 44. Bring up about a third and five here for Walton. The furthest they've advanced in Beachwood territory since the opening kickoff that the Walton Verona returner took all the way down to the Beachwood 35. Yeah, they didn't get too much further than that. Yeah, that's uh, senior running back Brett Weathorn, his uh, third carry of the year. He's got 26 yards receiving on the season. Uh, but that puts them on schedule to maybe pick up another first down. And that is the end of the first quarter. Beachwood leading Walton Verona 28 to nothing. Thanks for tuning in. Tune in. And we got to keep an eye on some of these games yeah. here tonight, Because yeah. Dixie is playing at Highlands, or no, home against Highlands. Yes. That would yeah. be a huge win if yes. Dixie can win that one. Simon Kenton is playing who? Uh, that I'm not sure. We'll have to check yeah. on that. Um, so just a couple of things, and I'll we'll talk about those games. But yeah. uh, just looking at uh, Class 2A district play, uh, you know, again, I talked about Beachwood, uh, Beachwood, Carroll County, Bracken County picked up wins in the first week over uh, Gallatin, Walton, and uh, yep. Owen County. Beachwood, of course, knocked off uh, Walton, Verona. I'm sorry, knocked off uh, Gallatin County 56 to nothing. Carroll beat Owen County 35 to 14. Uh, Bracken County beat Walton, Verona 35 to seven. Currently in the uh, RPI as far as uh, class two, class two A District Five, uh, Beachwood number one, Carroll County number two, Bracken three, Gallatin County four, Walton five, Owen County six. So uh, that's uh, that's how it looks. Uh, we'll get a little bit more clarity on that uh, after we see the final results from tonight. Simon Kenton's playing great crossing tonight. Okay. So hopefully okay. Simon Kenton just keep yeah. winning. Dixie Simon keep winning. Walton Vernon comes out of here, third down and five ball spotted on the Beachwood 44. Again, that is Avery Howe back in a quarterback. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. He gets a ball, throws to his right. Complete. Oh, Ooh, no. Nice hit out there by Sean Souter right as the ball got there. Good hit by Sean. Yeah, uh, nice uh, little slant attempt there by 
uh, you know, Avery Howe, but uh, Sean Souter, you know, kind of, you know, and if you think about the, you know, the years of, of all the really good corners, yeah. uh, you know, that might not be the, the, you know, the flashiest of players, but just play tough, good, hard-nosed football. Sean Souter is just that. He has had a great year at corner uh, and, and just really, you know, he was already a decent corner last yeah. year and, uh, you know, a nice contributor. But the, this year uh, he's really, really playing great on the edge. Fourth down and four, Walton going for it. Ball spotted on the Beachwood 44. Avery's got two receivers to his left, one to his right. Receiver comes in motion, handoff to the second man through. Again, that's Typey. He's going to be real close to the first down. I might get it he on might that have third that. effort. Yeah. Boy, it's going to be real close, though, the yeah, way the gonna, refs they got it. They did give first it to him. Down. First down, Walton Verona inside Beachwood territory, inside the about, call it the 39 there of Beachwood. Yeah, yeah, Ben Typey came in with only 27 carries and 84 yards, and uh, my guess is he's probably right around 84 or right around 40, 50 yards right yeah. now in this first, uh, early second quarter. First and 10, Walton Verona, ball spotted inside the Beachwood 40. 11:37 to go in the first half. Beachwood leading 28 to nothing. Thanks for tuning in. Had senior night earlier. The senior football player, senior cheerleader, senior band all were introduced pregame. Very what a, nice senior night. What careers they've had. Yes. Walton Verona first and 10 on the beach with 39. Avery Howe in the shotgun. Gets a snap, hands it again to Typey. Got a pretty good hole there. Takes it down about the 35, four-yard pickup, three and a half yards. Walton will take that on a first down all night. Yeah, it was, almost had a really uh, uh, vicious collision in the yeah. backfield there. I'm not sure if you saw, but Brody Waddell came uh, blitzing. Uh, blitzing through the uh, B gap on the right side of, uh, of of Walton's offensive line and just missed bringing down T uh, type Typey in the backfield, but Typey again showed some speed, so explosiveness when he got that handoff. If not, he would have been brought down for a two or three yard loss. But they gave him four yards on that first down run, second and six. Ball spotted on the Beachwood 36. Avery Howe back in after throwing a couple interceptions. Two receivers to his left, one to his right, two join him in the backfield. Receiver again comes in motion, hands to the jet sweep this time. Picks up another first down maybe for Walton. Nah, he's going to get about three or four yards. It'll pick up about a third and two. Runner on that time was Brett Whitehorn again. Yep. Picked up some positive yards. Third down, about three, call it. Yeah, we were in a senior. Uh, he had the uh, the catch early, uh, at 10 the first quarter. Uh, comes in with 18 carries, 47 yards. Doesn't have a score, but... Uh, nice pickup there for, for Brett Wheatthorn. Sure was, and this is Walton Verona's best drive of the game here after a so, penalty. Mark, and, and, and of note, Xavier Campbell lining up at defensive end a lot more Ooh, than we've seen this yeah. season. He's at left defensive end right now. Brody Waddell playing middle linebacker. Little wrinkle here. Avery in the shotgun again, throws out to Typey, going to his left, picks up. Maybe a one yard. It's going to bring up about a fourth down and call it one. Ball is going to be spotted at the Beachwood 31. Walton again will go for it. Call it fourth and two now. they got to get to about Beachwood's 29 yeah. for a first. Yeah, and, and a nice job there by Maddox Kelly at uh, his right defensive end spot to uh, to uh, bring down Typey. Uh, Maddox Kelly playing his first you know, full season uh, yeah. on both sides of the ball for the Tigers and uh, doing so very nicely. 9.15 to go, first half. 28 zip, Tigers over one, Verona, one's on their on their best drive of the game. Fourth down so and two. Now Xavier, Xavier back in middle linebacker and Waddell at right defensive end. Avery Howe gets a snap, looks to his right and throws in. Complete Ooh. just over the outstretched hand. That was Typey again on the catch. That'll be a first down. Take it down about the 25. Yeah, that was actually Eli Diop on, yeah, the, on the catch. Nice catch. Only his second catch of the season. That was a perfectly thrown sure ball, was. Mark. I mean, he threw that. You know, on the, uh, on the outside shoulder, if he would have thrown that anywhere inside, that would have been that might have been a pick six, yeah. but a really nice throw, uh, throw and catch there for the Bearcats. Takes it inside Beachwood's 25. First and 10 ball on to Beachwood 24. By far, Walton Verona's best drive of the night, aided by a roughing the kicker penalty on uh, fourth down at 15. Walton comes out again in the shotgun, which they have been in pretty much all night. Three receivers join him in the backfield. Waddell showing blitz. Handoff again to Typey, who goes to the right and hits a couple of Tigers. Going to get a couple of yards down near the 20. Call it the 21. Yeah, you got to give uh, Walton credit. Yeah, you know, they're, they're a doing a, a nice, nice uh, sustained drive here, uh, taking some clock uh, off as they go. Uh, ben Typey, Brett Weathorn, Eli Diop, uh, all having a, uh, a contributions to a very nice drive here for the Bearcats. And boy, would they love to get the ball into the end zone. How here. do you keep, how do you slow down 
the Beachwood Tiger offense. I, you keep, keep the ball them on the sidelines. Yeah, keep the ball away from them. Exactly. <laughs> They're standing over there on, on the sidelines now. So second down and eight here for Walton. 7.41 to go, first half. Thanks, everyone, again for tuning in. Second down and eight at the 22 of Beachwood. Avery Howe again in the shotgun. Three backs join him as well, one to Ooh, each side. How about side. this? Yeah. Love, love it. Formation football. Receiver goes in motion. Quarterback looks to his left and throws incomplete. Good coverage over there, again, by Sean Souter, who's all over the place. Nice coverage. Yeah, you can tell that the uh, Jeff Barth and his offensive staff, they love the slam plays, yeah. and uh, they're just having a hard time completing them because of uh, how well these these Beachwood corners are trained. Uh, and Sean Souter, again, uh, providing perfect coverage on that slam attempt incomplete. Another third and long here for Walton, and they've done a pretty good job on this drive getting some positive yards on third and long. It'll be third down, call it eight. Ball spotted on the 22 of Beachwood. They need a, a score here. That would be huge for them, no doubt. Again, Avery comes out in the shotgun. Two receivers join him in the backfield, two to his right, one to his left. He gets a snap, hands off again, had a teepee, and he's going to be met in the backfield, but fights for maybe a yard. Man, back to the scrimmage line, fourth and seven. And again, Brody Waddell playing uh, so well tonight uh, in, the, in the last couple of weeks, able to get into the backfield. You know, he's just so good at at, uh, at finding gaps and yeah. finding vulnerability on opposing offensive lines. And right there, he just found a hole and exploded through it, made initial contact on Typey, But Typey, just a big, strong runner. He's had a really nice first half here for the Bearcats, Walton able to at least get back to the line of scrimmage. They're coming out for an extra point. It'll be their kicker, Lincoln Mann, attempting. And this is going to be about a 39-yarder here, yeah. Murph. Two for three this season on field goal attempts. Snap is down. Nice kick. He got wow, it. Wow, how about that? Lincoln nice. Mann nails a 39-yard field goal to get Walton Verona on the board. 6.34 to go first half. Beachwood 28. Walton Verona 3. Nice kick there by yeah, Mann. Yeah, no Lincoln. kidding. Good kick, no kidding. Uh He's got a reputation as being a, a really, really good kicker. He's got a strong leg. Uh, you know, just uh, but it, but you know you can't discount how important that field goal was yeah. to uh, Coach Barth and his staff. Uh, you know, who it looked like it was going to get really, really ugly, really quick. Uh, and now they've at least uh, you know put points on the board and kept Beechwood from putting up you know any any more touchdowns. But Tigers with the ball, 28-3 leading, 6:34 to go first half. We're live on YouTube, and and you know what, folks. Or we're going to just, you know, apologize in advance if they ever show our faces on YouTube. I've they promise not look, to. If they ever do on accident, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, they, yeah. They, we, we, I've had we're discussions with uh, We're with not allowed the, near the camera. Tim, Tim Lillard and Brandon <laughs> Von Braum to never allow that to happen. <laughs> oh, mercy. Here we go. Thanks, everyone, again for tuning in. We will bring you all the games on YouTube that are home. Road games, we're not going to be able to, but have audio for road and all the playoff games as well. Walton Verona is kicking off here after their 39-yard field goal. Three Tigers deep, including Erbman, Cusick, and Fryman, I believe. The kick is onside. It bounces. Nice job by the up man there to just fall on it at the 39-yard line. Beachwood takes over first and 10. That was 22 there Brody for the Tigers. Brody Ayler. Yeah. Name that we'll be hearing a lot of. Yeah, in the we future. will. We will. I mean, a, a very, uh, very talented running back, fullback type uh, linebacker that, you know, just very similar to his brother. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the, those guys for a long time. Just tough, hard nosed. Uh, you know, uh, they're gonna they're gonna make you pay for it if <laughs> you come near their areas. But 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 Brody, an outstanding special teams player. Uh, you know, he's really shown uh, he's got a a pension for that. Hayden in the shotgun, two receivers to his right. Flaherty joins him in the backfield, hands off to Flaherty. Tough three yards out there. Brought down hard. Picks up about two yards out to about the 42. Nice tackle there by one run of 54, I believe that was. I think it's 64. 64, I'm sorry. Luke Hyden, good tackle. Yeah, and he's coming off. Looks like he's a little banged up. Picks up two on the play. The ball spotted out on the Beachwood 42, second down and eight. 6.08 to go first half, 28-3. Tigers leading one run on senior night. Hayden comes out again in shotgun, which he always is in. <laughs> Two receivers to his left, one to his right. Flaherty joins him in the backfield, gets it, fakes a handoff to Flaherty, throws it deep down the right side for Cusick, does a nice Ooh. effort trying to catch that. Real good effort there by Cusick, just a little over his head. Yeah, good coverage there on the, uh, on the outside by Trace Dalton. 
Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, if the ball would have been a little bit more inbounds, that would have made him, he, uh, Cusick might have had a chance to bring that in, but uh, good coverage by the Bearcats there. Sure was. Third down and eight now, Hubbard Beachwood. Ball spotted on their own, 42. Clay Hayden, I mean, un, his stats are just jump out at you. Almost 2,000 yards passing already. 22 touchdowns already. 318 yards per game. I mean, that is just incredible stats. Yeah, I've got the – we'll talk about more yeah. about that in a second. I've got his stats uh, in terms of where he ranks in the state, and it's really impressive. Third and eight, Hayden in a shotgun, empty backfield. Three receivers to his left, two to his right. Hayden gets a snap, looks to his left, throws to his left, and it's got Erdman open. Goodbye. Wow. Good night. 25, 20, 10, 4, 3, 2, 1, Luke Erdman. Unbelievable. Yeah, 58 yards, and what a what a throw and what a catch. And I'll tell you, uh, uh, Coach Barth brought some pressure up the middle. Uh, he brought uh, Alex Utsi up the middle on a blitz, and uh, and Clay got rid of that ball <laughs> right in time. Yeah. He threw an absolute dime to Urban in stride. 58 yards and another Luke Urban touchdown. He's got a rushing touch. I'm sorry, two two receiving touchdowns tonight. He now has. 10 on wow. the year. And I tell you what, no, no one can cover him, even against Covington Catholic. They had no answer for him, Murph. No, no one does. I haven't seen anyone yet. Colton Lair out for the extra point. So 10 touchdowns uh, through through the air, two on the ground, 12 wow. touchdowns in six games and two quarters. Fantastic season so far by Luke Erdman. Extra point is good. 540 to go first half. Beachwood 35 Walton Verona, three. And I tell you, man, all these guys, Murph, are coming back. Cusick coming back. Clay Hayden coming back. Luke Erdman coming back. Chase Flaherty coming back. I mean, it, it, it's yeah, unbelievable. It, it really is. And just at, looking at Clay's season, currently uh, he's tied for third in passing yards per game at 318 behind Blake uh, Barry from Eminence at 358. Wow. Brady Atwell from Owensboro Catholic at 319. And he's tied with Darrell Loggins from South Warren at 318. Uh, he, had, he came in with 22 touchdowns, tied for fifth behind Barry tw uh, with 27, Atwell with 26. Cooper's Cam O'Hara, who is just exploding, is yeah. getting Division One Power 5 offers already as a sophomore out of Cooper. He's got 25. Cole Hodge from Cal with 24. And Clay and uh, Bryce Button with 22. Uh, he's third in yardage at 1,909, third wow. in completion percentage at 72.3. I think Clay Hayden's proving to those across the state that his numbers are no fluke. That's what he is. He is a superstar, Mark Dowie. Luke Sleets again on the kickoff, fielded by the Juan Verona back, who takes it out to about the 35, and that's been their top play on offense for the last few drives here is their opening kickoff. They've done a good yeah. job getting good field position. They take that all the way out to about the 37, first and 10 Bearcats. Yeah, nice, uh, nice Trace Dalton with the a return there and yeah. a really nice tackle there by Brody or Cohen Henderson assists on the outside. Uh, so 35 to 3 here in the second quarter. Beachwood with the lead over Walton Verona. 532 remaining in the first half. Mark Talley, Walton Verona, they better hope uh, yeah. their, their running attack can keep uh, can, can, can take this into the end of halftime. I tell you what, Brody Waddell is a great kid and his parents so, are phenomenal, but I tell you what. On the football field, he's a mean guy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's just he's he's mean really, out there. really good. <laughs> Walton Verona, first and 10, ball on their own, four, uh, 37, I'm sorry. Avery Howe in the shotgun, two backs join him back there. Receiver comes in motion. Hands it off again to number 22, Ben Teepe, going to, or I'm sorry, Typey, back to the line of scrimmage, second yeah. and 10. Nice tackle there uh, by Chase Flaherty to uh, prevent Typey from gaining any yardage. Uh, Flaherty also, who all we talked about how well he's played uh, at the tailback this year. He's yeah. really a, another kind of like Sean Souter, you know, really emerges a really solid, reliable, dependable uh, defender uh, chase at his outside linebacker spot. This defense from the Tigers is, you know, it's just a slow build, and every week, you know, we've yeah. seen it get better and better and tighter and tighter. Hopefully that continues. Walton comes out second down to 10. Ball spotted on their own 37. Waddell at right, defensive end, Campbell, middle linebacker. Avery Howe in the shotgun, two There's a backs switch. join him. Hand it off again, take it over on the left-hand side, out there by Brett Weedhorn. He's going to pick up a couple, bring up about a third down and seven, ball spotted on the Walton 40. Yeah, Talon Linder and Jack Meyer in on the uh, on the tackle there. Talon Linder, uh, who has, has shown a really nice ability to get downhill and get into the backfield and be a run stopper. 
Uh, so nice job by him. Uh, Jordy Wagner checking in. Uh, Maddox Kelly will uh, take a breather. Jordy Wagner, uh, uh, junior, outside linebacker, defensive end type. Uh, he can play inside on the defensive line. Uh, like some of these other young men on this Beachwood defense, big but very quick. Yeah. Jordy Wagner, a, a very much an athlete. Call it third down and seven for Walton Verona. Ball spotted on their own 40. Avery Howe again in the shotgun. One back joins him in the backfield, two to each side of him. He gets a ball, looks to his right, throws to his right. Complete out there, but if falling down, he'll be short of the first down, but picks up about three. It's going to be fourth and two on the Walton 45. Can't see who caught that. That was Trace Dalton. Okay, nice yeah. catch. And I believe just based on the uh, numbers, I'm, I'm seeing that's his second catch of the year. He has one catch for 66 yards. Uh, Dalton, who we, we've seen was, uh, you know, two nice returns. Yeah. A very impressive uh, kickoff returner with a lot of speed as well. Fourth down and two, Walton will be going for it. 3.20 to go first half. Beachwood 35, <laughs> Walton grown to three. Austin Flesh in at the corner on the right side, the wide side of the field. Short side of the field is towards the Beachwood sideline in the athletic building. Again, Avery Howe out in a shotgun. Three backs join him in the backfield. He gets a snap, hands it to the last man through. He's going to be stopped short of the first down the way they're marking it. They're going to mark it at about I the I think it's going to be about a half yard six. short. Yeah. Let's see. that the, the official coming from our side was a little more generous. See where they spot that. Haven't said anything yet. Tell you what, Mark, that was a that was a collision between two big, strong athletes and Xavier Campbell and Ben Typey. And uh, Xavier won because it's Beachwood's ball. Yeah, Typey <laughs> Typey listed at six foot one, two hundred and twenty pounds. That was a uh, it was a really uh, that was a that was a battle inside yeah. there. But Xavier Campbell did a great job to come up and deliver the hit there. Xavier Campbell, he's another one. Great kid, nice guy, but on the football field, woo, run, get away from him. First down and 10, Tigers on the Walton Bruin of 46, 256 to go. He is a great kid, oh, by the way, Xavier. Absolutely. Your aces, Absolutely. bud. Uh, Tigers come out first and 10. Walton Bruin of 46, Hayden in the shotgun. Two receivers line up to either side. He gets a snap, looks to himself, completed. Oh, incomplete. Just at Chase's feet there. Chase tried to catch it, couldn't come up with it. Yeah, uh, yeah unfortunately, uh, Chase, uh, I'm able to bring that one in, but uh, yeah, had he been able to bring it in, that probably would have been at least probably an eight to 12 yard game. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this you know, we're seeing a lot, this uh, this two uh, double bunch yeah. uh, receiver set that we haven't seen a lot of this year. But, uh, you know, uh, obviously we've seen uh, Walt Vernon having a tough time defending that. Flaherty is doing a great job catching passes out of the backfield, has 22 catches coming into this game. Hayden again uh, under, under center, center now, eye formation. This? Hands it off to Xander coming through the first time at fullback. He's going to pick up about three yards down about the Walton 43. Clock is running, 2.43 to go first half. It'll bring up about a third and seven here for Beachwood. Yeah, nice tackle there by Jonathan Seibert for the Bearcats. 2.34 remaining here in this first half of play. Beautiful night for football. Man, we've had good luck in the weather front all season. Third and seven, Tigers. Hayden again under center. I formation, two receivers line up to his left. Hayden fakes a snap to Flaherty coming through, rolling oh, to his right open. now. Wide open over the middle. Talon Linder caught it to 25, 20. He makes a man miss. Cuts back inside 15. Brought down from behind inside the one run of 15 all the way down to 13. Talon having a great game. Yeah, that was uh, the, uh, Clay Hayden there you know, threaded the needle to find Talon Linder in, in, uh, in between two defenders, and Talon made a great catch on a fastball yeah. uh, delivered perfectly by Clay. Uh, but James Cusick was wide open on a post pattern uh, down the middle of the field. Clay didn't see that. That would have been another touchdown had he seen it. There was a flag thrown down. I didn't see a call. He picked it up. First and 10, Beachwood. Ball spotted at the Walton Verona 13. Don't know what that flag was about. Tigers take over again. Have plenty of time here. Two minutes to go. First half clock running. Hayden Luke, again uh, under center. Luke Sleet in at tight end on the left like side. Like to see Luke Watch get one. for some sort of attempt to yeah. him. Yeah. I formation. Hayden hands off to Flaherty. Second man through. Chase picks up about two yards on first down. Takes it down about the Walton Verona 12. Clock is our friend. It's running. 140 to go. First half. Plenty of time here. The Tigers have all three timeouts left. Hayden gets to the play from Greg Herget. They're huddling up. Still have plenty of time here. Would love to see them 
try to throw one to Luke Sleep. Yeah, I would that'd too. be great. I would too. And he's on. And he's yeah. lined up on the right side. Hayden under center, eye formation, two receivers to his left. Clay gets it. Xander Riggler, first man through from the fullback five. There we go. Picked up some positive yards. You see where they'll spot that. It's going to be about third down and maybe two now. Ball spotted on the Walton Verona five. 105 to go first. And he's half. such a hard runner, he is. Mark Tally. Man, I mean, he, is. he just he just he just keeps turning those legs and he's 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 a high stepper. Yeah. You know, he's a high <laughs> stepping back that you know, he just he's a violent runner with those legs, man. Runs angry. Yeah, he's man. another one. I'd love yeah. to see him get into the end zone too. Third down and one, they're calling it. Ball spotted on the Walton five. 44 seconds to go first half. Beachwood leading 35-3. Hayden under center, I formation. Gets a snap, hands it to Flaherty. Flaherty, 4 3 2 1. Going to be close, maybe. They're spotted at the one. At the one. It'll be a first down now. Beachwood might have to call a timeout. They do, or they're going to. I'm sorry, he picked up a first down, so the clock will start there. It starts up again. Down to 29 seconds. Hayden gets a play from Greg. The ball is at about the quarter yard line, Murph. It's right almost on the goal line. Quickly out now. Hayden under center. I think this is going to regular. And you are right, but a flag is oh. down. Might have gotten a Beachwood got to move quick. We'll see. Dead ball. Offsides, Walton. Okay, that's on Walton. He was in anyway. Chase Flaherty would have scored easily on that. Or, I'm sorry, Xander would have scored easily on that. So they scoot the ball up a, about an eighth of a yard here. It's first and goal still. The ball on about the eight-inch line. Tigers, the clock is stopped now, and the Tigers will call a timeout. We'll stay right here with you. 35-3, to 3, 14 seconds left to go first half of this football game. So let's talk about, so we, we went through District 5, but let's talk yes. about our sister district, District 6 uh, in 2A. Um, and uh, interesting how this this is laid out. Uh, now, so we'll play them, I'm sorry, in the first two rounds of the playoffs. Yes. We'll play them. Yes, exactly. So, so our R1 will play their four, yep. their one will okay. play our R4. Um, so right now, um, they they have not put this tonight is their for, is the first round, first uh, district uh, round for okay. them. Um, the the uh, the four there's only four teams in in uh, District Six and that's Somerset, Danville, Leslie County, and Breathitt County. Okay. Um, so tonight Somerset is at Breathitt County, uh, Danville is at Leslie County. Now taking a look, uh, you know, just kind of at what. You know what those schools look like in terms of you know RPI and you know what uh, you know what they may look like uh, going into the as we head to the end of the season. Really, the only team uh, you know that is you know anywhere near us would be Somerset, who's currently ranked number eight. Mm -hmm. uh, Danville's really struggling this year. They are uh, at 15. Uh, let's do this play, and then we'll come back to District sure. 6 talk. First and goal, Tigers. Clay Hayden under center. Riggler and Flaherty join him in the backfield. Cusick wide out to his right. Gets it, hands it to Riggler. Touchdown. Nice to see Xander Excellent. score on love senior that. night. Absolutely love that. And, you know, <laughs> Coach Volker and, the, and those those guys, they, they love Xander Riggler. And that's yeah. a, that is a tip of the cap respect. For to, all the uh, blocking he's yeah, done. For all yeah. the blocking, for all the, for the years of, of, uh, of, uh, perfectly displaying on the football field what the Beachwood Way is all about. No doubt about that. Colson Lair out for the extra point. Ten seconds left to go in the first half. Beachwood leading right now 41-3. Pending this extra point, Colson Lair has been a spectacular kicker. Kicked a 43-yard field goal earlier this year. This extra point is up and good. With 10 seconds left to go, first half, 42-3, Murph. So, yeah, how about that? Now, so, now, could we end up playing Somerset in well, the third round? Or, yeah. I'm going okay. to talk about that. So, um, so, as I, so as I said, Somerset currently ranked number eight. So they're in the top ten in the 2A RPI. Yep. Uh, Danville is at number 15. Uh, Breathitt County is at number 23. And Danville, I'm sorry, in Leslie County. Uh, Leslie County is at 18. Okay. So Now, um, I'm sorry, when do they turn yes. off the RPI? Yeah. So, what, so what would happen is the first two rounds yep. uh, is, you know, we, we play with District 6. And then what happens is in, in round three, the four teams on our side, District 5, 6, 7, and 8. Mm -hmm. So w the four teams remaining, one – one through four, four plays one, or four reseated. travels to one. It's reseeded. Ah. Four travels to one, three travels to two. Okay. So. Okay. So, so we wouldn't get Somerset then, or could we? 
the way it is now? Probably not, because Somerset, Somerset would we'll have to go down and play LCA, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I well, don't know. We'll have yeah. to. I'll, I'll, we'll, <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting ahead of that. our yeah. skis here. I'm sorry, yes. man. I'm getting us all thrown off. But you know, the I mean, the interesting thing with that is, is other than Somerset, it, you know, District Six is similar to us, yeah. relatively weak to overall in terms of uh, all the teams in the district. We've yeah. had a great history, though, against both of those teams, yes. Somerset and Danville. Way back in the yeah. days of Yeagle, we had some battles against Danville. Definitely. Man. We had some Definitely. great games. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, in taking a look at the uh, the RPI overall as we, as we uh, you know, head into, uh, you know, week seven, uh, uh, this was the, uh, as, of, as of today, uh, Owensboro Catholic number one at 6 and 0. Uh, Lexington Christian number two. Mayfield number three. And Mark Alley, Beachwood, Beachwood number four. Yeah. Uh, Green County number six. Mur I'm sorry, number five. Green Ca uh, Murray six. Crinton, Crinton County seven. Uh, Somerset, as we said earlier, eight. Washington County nine. And Carroll County at 10. So uh, the news, I guess the takeaway from that is Beachwood falls to four yep. uh, and Mayfield uh, Mayfield jumps to number three. So um, out of all that, selfishly, Mark, I'm hoping that we, whatever happens here, <laughs> I hope that we do not end up on a bus to Mayfield. Uh, to Mayfield. No so, doubt about it. Yeah. Four so that's, hours and 50 minutes one way. But, you know, it, it, it would be interesting now, we can't play Owensboro Catholic until the finals, correct? Because they're on the other side of the bracket, if I'm if I'm correct. So we could get LCA in the state semis, maybe. Yes, yeah. So, um, yeah, and, and again, we'll have more clarity uh, yeah, next week goes. when we talk about this. But, uh, you know, we are at, at right now, Owensboro, Owensboro Catholic, Mayfield, and Lexington Christian are all on the the left Ooh. side so Ooh. but two of them will come out of there so yep. but okay. what you know one of them is not is not going to come out of there okay. so got it uh yeah we are again you know we do benefit from yeah. from our side okay. so okay uh, but uh you know in uh, taking a quick look uh you know at, at some of the act action last week around around the state if i can find my uh my my notes here. You take on, great notes, Murph. I want to give it to you. Well, you, you know, you actually being nice on the stack makes it very hard. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to bring in an assistant. Uh, but uh, let's see. It is halftime. Oh, by the yeah, way, Mark, Beachwood 42, Walton Verona three. It, um, oh, we'll stay here, take a quick break here in a few minutes, and hope everyone's enjoying Senior Night here. It's a beautiful evening for uh, football. We're home again next week, and four games left after tonight, Murph. Yeah, in the season I, playoff it, start. It, and shocking that we're already I in know. week seven. I mean, it just it, it went really quick. But you know, as we say every year, that's uh, that's the that's the way it goes. Kevin Gray, if you, you're tuned in, we uh, wish that you were up here on this beautiful evening enjoying this game. Yeah, Forty-two yeah, to a, three what a night. What a night. Oh, here it is. Okay. So just taking a look at uh, the action last week and who everyone yep. in, in uh, at the top of two A is playing. Uh, last week, uh, Owensboro Catholic, who uh, currently holds the number one spot in two A, uh, they knocked off Crittenden County sixty-two to twelve. Now, Mark, and that's what helped them. Yes, and Crittenden County currently ranked. Uh, in the RPI, number seven in 2A. So that Crittenden County team uh, is no slouch, and they uh, they took one on the chin big time, a 50-point loss to Owensboro Catholic. Uh, Brady Atwell, junior quarterback, 27 of 39, 304 yards, five touchdowns. Oh, and by the way, 103 yards rushing and two touchdowns on six carries. Yeah. Uh, Owensboro Catholic, 526 yards of total offense. Wow. They just continue to dominate everyone they play, uh, they have become, uh, in, in, in the eyes of many experts, uh, along with Beachwood and LCA, uh, the prohibitive favorites yeah. for, for the state championship. Um, uh, tonight they are taking on Todd County Central. Uh, Todd County Central ranked 21 in the, uh, in the 2A RPI, so that uh, will more than likely be a running clock victory for uh, our friends from Owensboro Catholic. Uh, Lexington Christian, they uh, they uh, put a running clock on Shawnee last week, uh, 56 to nothing in that game. Cutter Bowie, nine of 12 for uh, uh, for 118 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, Br uh, Brady Thomas, five uh, uh, he had five carries for 63 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, tonight they uh, face Fort Knox. Fort Knox 0 and 6, one of the uh, bottom teams in yeah. the 2A RPI. So that will be a running clock victory. Um, and then our friends from Mayfield, who were 
uh, sitting there in a three spot, you know, lo looking down at us, hoping that they don't have to, uh, hoping that they don't have to mess with Beachwood again. Yeah. Uh, they uh, defeated 6A Henderson County, which helped them. Yeah, that's what uh, got them. Yeah, in, uh, but they, they, uh, that was actually a closer game than most thought it would be. Uh, 38 to 24, uh, Juju starts the uber talented yes, tailback sir. for Mayfield. 18 carries, 178 wow. yards, and three touchdowns against Henderson County. Uh, tonight, Mayfield taking on Caldwell County, another uh, bottom dweller in Class 2A. They are 0 and 6, so that will likely be a running clock victory for Mayfield as well. So our RPI might help us these next two weeks from who we're playing yes. in our district. Yes. So help yeah. us a bit. Yeah. Uh, taking a look at scores from around Northern Kentucky tonight, Cooper uh, putting putting a uh, beating on Connor, 28 to nothing. Uh, Cooper at the half. Uh, Dixie Highlands, Dixie trailing Highlands 30 to 14 early in the third quarter. Come on, Colonel. Yeah, no, come, come on, on Dixie. Back. Uh, Ludlow uh, defeating uh, Bellevue 35 to nothing at the half. Uh, Bracken County, to, uh, 14 to seven over Carroll County at the end of the first quarter. So that's one to watch because, yeah. as we spoke about earlier, uh, Bracken and Carroll are you know, in terms of you know the rankings for the six to a District Five teams. Beachwood number one, Bracken County, Carroll County, yeah. actually Carroll County two and Bracken County three currently. But many do believe that in the end, Bracken County wound up being the number two team uh, in two uh, a District Five. Yeah. Uh, so we'll pay close attention to that game. Uh, Boone County, Scott, uh, not sure. Yeah, I don't have a score there. Uh, Louisville St. Xavier uh, beating Ryle 28-14 to hmm. uh, early in the second quarterback. Mark, I'm not sure if you saw last week uh, Louisville Trinity uh, knocked off uh, Louisville St. X oh, in, wow. in upset form with a freshman quarterback. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Trinity's had a tough couple of years yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, South Oldham, let's see, or Woodford County defeating South Oldham 13-6 to at the half. Covenant Catholic uh, uh, putting a molly whipping on Grant County, 42 to six at the half, and uh, in District uh, District Six 2A football, Somerset leading Breathitt County, 14 to seven early in the second quarter. Well, there you go, folks. All the scores. We'll take a quick break yeah, we'll here. We'll stay live on YouTube. Come back and join you for second half action at the end of the first half. Beachwood 42, Walton Brown three. Thanks for tuning in. Take a quick break. Right back after this. Go Tigers.
Running clock will be starting here in the second half. Walton Verona is going to be kicking off to Beachwood. Walton Verona opened up the game on opening kickoff, took the ball into Beachwood territory, all the way down to about the Beachwood 35, but stalled there. Beachwood 42 on, uh, points. Walton Verona kicked a nice 39-yard field goal there to get on the board. Yeah, it was very nice. Uh, uh, scores for Beachwood. Uh, Luke Erdman, a 76-yard touchdown catch Ooh. from uh, Clay Hayden on a on – a, uh, shuffle pass. Chase Flaherty with a four-yard rushing touchdown. James Cusick with a 38-yard touchdown pass from Clay. Fryman with a 20-yard defensive fumble return. Luke Erdman with a 58-yard pass from Hayden. And Xander Riggler with a one-yard run for the final nice. score. Everyone's getting on the board here for Beachwood. The opening kickoff of the second half goes out of bounds. Beachwood will take over first and 10 for their first possession. Looks like to see if we have any subs in here. Probably we'll get a few. We'll do our best to keep up. I see Luke Urban out there. Clay Hayden's coming out here for the start of the second half. Probably get a lot of the uh, freshman team that will be yeah, able to play here As, as we did last <laughs> week, I would expect those kids to be moving in pretty quickly here. Hayden comes out in the shotgun. Four receivers to his left. James Cusick, the lone receiver to his right. Empty backfield. Clay in the shotgun. Chase Flaherty comes in motion. Clay gets a snap, looks to his right, throws quickly back to his left, and caught out there by Tyler Fryman, who goodbye. Oh, boy, 50, he's going to split these two. Split a couple guys, can he? No. Nice tackle there by Walton Verona to Fryman. Looked like he had it. He, he got tackled at about the 26, first and 10 Tigers. Fryman's got some great speed too, Murph. Yeah, that was a really nice tackle right there by the uh, Walton Verona defender. Uh, that's Braden Donato on the touchdown saving tackle, but yeah. a nice long gainer. Uh, for the Tigers. Tigers come out first and 10 on that big pass completion of Fryman. Clay Hayden gets a call from Greg Hergett. Ball is spotted on the Walton Verona 26, first and 10, Beachwood 10, 49 to go, third quarter, 42-3 Tigers. Three receivers line up to Hayden's right, two to his left, again, empty backfield. How do you cover all these guys, Murph? Don't know how teams do it. Flaherty again in motion, looks Hayden, quick throw out to his left, and that is a oh, touchdown. That's an easy play a every time. Block. Yeah, Xavier Man. Campbell with a pancake block on the left sideline right in front of the wow. Beachwood uh, coaching staff. I mean, what a uh, no chance for Wallen Brown on that play. James Cusick in for the touchdown on, you said it, a fantastic block well, by that, Xavier Campbell. And that play, as well as, wow. that, as well as that throwback play, worked so well every time with yep. Logan Castleman uh, m many years ago. Uh, that play right there uh, with, with Xavier Campbell leading the way has been money this year. Now we're going to get a new kicker, senior Sean Souter, out for the extra right. point. Come on, Sean. See what you got. 48-3 Tigers. Talon Linder on the hold up, boy. Holt gets by. Sean Souter's going to have to throw it. He's a quarterback. He might be able to do something here. Let's see. Sean looking for somebody. He's going to take yeah, the able to bring it in. That ball slipped through Talon's hand there on the snap. Sean tried to do something there. But at 10-36, I'm sorry, 10-26 to go third quarter, 48-3 Tigers. Missed extra point there. About the only bad news for the Beachwood offense for the last three weeks. So that's the second touchdown of the night for James Cusick. He had a 38-yard touchdown pass in the first quarter from Clay Hayden. Uh, that is his now seventh touchdown catch of the year. So just want to kind of run, run you through this. The top three receivers for uh, for Beachwood, Erdman with 10 touchdown, 10 receiving touchdowns, Cusick now with uh, with seven, wow. and Tyler Fryman with five. It's incredible. Yeah. I mean, for a, a high school team to have three guys, even four guys, five getting down a sleet and talent. Yeah. I mean, you got five weapons. Yeah. Who do you cover? Who yeah, do it, you don't cover? It's, I mean, it, it's I mean, incredible. And that's the thing because you know, and and, and this coaching staff is so. Uh, they're watching everything opposing coaches do and yep. how they how they cover uh, our guys defensively. The minute they roll coverage to one side, they're just going to the yep. one that's not getting double co double coverage. Luke Sleet again on the kickoff, a nice kick fielded by the Walton Verona player at his own 15, out to the 20-25, has a hole again, out to about the 31. Nice tackle out there by, I believe, that was Brody Ayler again on special teams, doing a great job. Sophomore Brody Ayler all over the place. And that's uh, four touchdown passes on the night for uh, Clay Hayden. Wow. Uh, that is his third game this season with four touchdowns or more. He had four against Campbell County and seven against Dixie. People in Kentucky have been saying Clay Hayden throws the ball as good as anybody. Yeah. I, I mean, he just throws a beautiful ball. He, I mean, it's uh, has power to it, has great touch. I mean, he's got a cannon. 
Walt Rona comes out again. Quarterback will be Avery Howe. He's in the shotgun. Two backs join him. Snap to Howe. Hands it off again to Eli Diop, and he's going to lose a yard, and a flag comes in real late. Might get a face mask. We will. Personal foul up. Horse collar tackle. That's going to be a first down for Walton. That penalty yardage will be spotted off from the spot. Take it out to about the 45. First down, Walton Verona. 48-3 our score here on senior night. A beautiful evening again. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We are on YouTube as well on the World Wide Web. Yeah, and special thanks to Tim Lillard and Brandon yes. Von Braum for their uh, – uh, their technical expertise and uh, <laughs> making sure that uh, you know the the production looks professional yeah. and uh, and so those of you watching, a lot of people behind uh, what you're watching and uh, we're all very proud of it. Uh, yes. But it has definitely taken an army. First down, Walton Verona out to their own 47. Avery Howe coming out in the shotgun. Two backs join him. Two receivers to his right. They've run a lot out of this formation. See what they do. Avery gets a snap, hands it to the second man through, who's going to pick up maybe about a loss of a yard all the way back to the Walton Verona 46. Yeah, nice job by Luke Erdman. Uh, he, he went low to uh, to bring down this bring, bring down the tailback for a loss of one. You know this is, this defense, and and again, this this is nothing unusual. This is the way it's been for years. It, you know, it's so hard. Regardless of the reasons why, some teams with injuries, some teams just a lack of skill or lack of lack of uh, offensive line. If you bring a team in that cannot throw the ball against the, against the Tigers, yeah. they, they're going to have a really hard time. Long you know, night. It's just, I mean, and that's what Walt Marone is struggling with here tonight. Second and 11, Avery in the shotgun, hands it to the second oh. man through. Gets oh, through. Big hit that in the backfield. Big hit back there by Austin. Or not Austin, I'm sorry, Brody Waddell. Yeah, very big hit in the backfield by uh, Brody Waddell. He was able to, to blitz through. He just he he just missed the ball carrier again, but <laughs> end up taking out one of the uh, one of the other backs. <laughs> Who's ever in the way? Yeah. He's going to get it. And again, you know, we talked about last year. You know, it, it in any and we've seen it for since we've been doing the radio. There's always these guys that kind of come, you know, out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and start around midseason to e either through just being put more out on the field more or position switches like we saw Tor and O'Shea and yep. Jack. Meyer last year, the Brody Waddell. Yes. Watch his emergence this year. He has played fantastic football the last three weeks. Allowing Xavier to get back yeah. on the defensive line, too. Again, third and eight here for Walton. Hand, uh, throws out to his left, incomplete. Oh, intercepted. What a catch. James what a catch. Cusick on the deflection. Beautiful wow. play by James Cusick there. Yeah, that's three interceptions tonight yeah. for uh, for this ball hawking Beachwood defensive backfield. Uh, Cusick, uh, you know, he's just so. Uh, so talented at, at reading at reading what's going on in front of him and uh, you know, just that athleticism, being able to uh, focus and bring in that deflection. Great job by James Cusick. Might see some subs here on offense. Now we do. Uh, Clay Hayden is going to have a seat over on the bench after his four-touchdown evening. Beachwood's going to take over first and 10 on their own 49. That's Bo Souter, our man at quarterback. With the I formation, they've changed all the freshman jersey numbers. We'll try to get them to you. Hands off hood of the fullback coming through. He's going to lose about a yard. They're going to get him back to the scrimmage line. I will take it. It'll be a second down and about 11 here for, for Beachwood. Yeah, that was Tyson Hergen on the carry. His first uh, action of the night offensively. Uh, looked like a little bit of confusion on, yeah. on which side that handoff was going to, but uh, no gain on the play. Here we go, second down and 10. So Bo is wearing 84 at quarterback, I believe. Yes. Yes, yes. okay. He had a nice game this past week. Bo Souter looked good. 6-10 to go, 48-3 in the third quarter, 48-3 Tigers. Pitch out to the back. Ayler coming around at the 50, going to get inside of Walton Road in the territory at about the 49, about a three-yard pickup. Yeah, and uh, it, what, you, what you like there about Brody Ayler is just how hard he runs. Yes. You know, I said it, we said it earlier about Xander Riggler, but Brody Ayler, uh, you know, in a very similar way, a violent runner. Hmm. Uh, he will never be, he will never fall down backwards. He's going to deliver the blow. He's not the one that gets hit, uh, and, he, and he's like that consistently. Right there, he just bowled over senior outside linebacker Brett Weathorn. Third and eight Tigers, ball spotted on the Walton Verona 49. Souter now in the shotgun. Brody Ayler to his right, three receivers to his right. 
He gets the ball, throws it quickly out to 82, takes it down to 40 for a first down. Nice throw out there from Bo. Real quick eight-yard hitch route. Don't know who caught that. Col that's that's freshman Colton Craycraft. Craycraft, all right. Yeah, the younger brother of yeah. uh, old friend Carson yes, Craycraft, uh, who is such a key part of uh, – uh, the last couple of state championship runs at corner. Uh, Colton Craycraft, like his brother, tough, hard-nosed player that can uh, catch the ball. Uh, he can he can run the ball. He can play great defense. Very athletic young man that will be a, a key player for this Beachwood Tigers program over the next four years. And Bo Souter is a good-looking young yes, QB, sir. too. He throws a good ball as well. First Superstar and ten. Yeah. in waiting. First and ten, Tigers on the one run of 40. Bo in the shotgun, gets the ball, looks to his left, throws back to his left, complete. Down to about the 35. They'll push him back, spotted at about the 37. Picks up about four yards on first down. Yeah, and that's Patrick Weaver on the reception there for the Tigers, senior Patrick Weaver. Yeah, Souter has done a, a good job in these past two weeks playing quarterback. Well, I mean, he's our future, no doubt well, about he, it. He, uh, like, like so many of these players, he's uh, one of those kids that has played since he was four or five yeah. years old. Uh, he came up with the uh, the Taylor Mill Eagles, uh, and, and he knows he knows football, and he's he's been trained and put around and coached by the right people his entire life. Souter in the shotgun, hands it off again. First man through, and now this 22. Brody Ayler going to be, picks up about a couple, going to bring up about a third down and four. <clears throat> yeah, nice job again by Brody. He, he, uh, he kept his legs churning, high step through to the next level, spun off a linebacker and was able to fall forward for a uh, – for a short pickup where it looked like it might have not been able to get anything. Running clock here today, 3.39 to go third quarter, 48-3 Tigers over Walton. Bo is, comes out in a shotgun. Souter joins him in the backfield. It's like Will Shings at right tackle. Bo throws complete first down yardage inside the Walton Verona 25 down about the 26. Inside the 30, I mean. Yeah, and that's Colton Craycraft again on the reception. Uh, the the much like the varsity version of the Beachwood Tigers, the freshman football team um, uh, is it throws the ball at a high rate yeah. and very successfully over uh, over other opposing freshman defenses. And uh, uh, Bo Souter has great chemistry with uh, with his freshman receivers, including Colton uh, Colton Craycraft, who we've seen now catch two two balls on this drive. Now Bo under center now hands it to the fullback coming through oh. and this fumbles, but again a nice play out there by Brody Ayler to fall on that fumble. Going to be right back to the line of scrimmage, second and ten for the Tigers on the Walton Bruna 26. Yeah, nice shot to bring that one back in there by Craycraft again. Yeah, names to, on, on the freshman team. There's a, there are a lot of future superstars on that team, including Souter, Caleb Aerosmith, Colton Craycraft. Uh, you know, uh, Nathan Paps, uh, just just uh, he, the entire roster is just full of, of uh, weapons. Yeah. Souter in the shotgun. Ayler joins him in the backfield. Two receivers to either side. Souter, he looks to his right. Now he's going to keep it. Nice run there, 20 inside the 20, down to 15. Made a guy miss. Going to be real close to a first down. Good run there from Bo. Yeah, and that's why that's another part of, of Bo Souter's arsenal, so to speak, that uh, makes him so dangerous at the at the freshman level is his ability to tuck it and run. And he, as you saw there, yeah. he's not somebody that's gonna, <laughs> you know, he's not somebody that's gonna shy away from contact. He will he will run at and over defenders. First and ten, Beachwood ball spotted on the Walton Verona 16 after the Bo Souter. First down run, again under center, hands it to Ayler coming through, second back through, takes it inside the 11, down about the 10. Nice five, six yard pick up there on first down. Yeah, nice job by the uh, left side of the offensive line there to, to kind of uh, see off the entire, that entire side of uh, Walton Verona's defense to uh, help uh, the six yard pickup. Yeah, second down to four, coming up for Tigers ball spotted right at the 10. Beachwood still can get a first down here. 1-10 to go, third quarter, 48-3 Tigers leading. Again, Bo under center, I formation, two receivers line up to his right. Hands it off to the first man through there. 25 is the jersey number. I believe that is That's Parton. Nathan Parton on Going the to carry. Be, maybe give him about a half yard. Just spotted inside the Walton Verona 10, call it the 9. Going to bring him about a third and three and a half here. So there are several freshmen dressing tonight. Jake Atmore, Nathan Paps, Cale Barrismith, Bo Souter, uh, Colton Craigcraft, Jake Holbrook, Colin Morris, King Kingston Brockett, Kyle Shaw, Cole Hoskins, Vanden Smith,
Uh, I believe that is it, but uh, very talented freshman class. Now Bo Souter under center, eye formation. Hands it to the second man through Brody Ayler. Brody cuts it around. Nice tackle here by the Walton linebacker, 58, I believe. 59, Jonathan Siebert. Going to be fourth down now. The ball still spotted yeah. about the nine-yard line. See what they do? Probably go for it here. Yeah, Walton Vernon still has the, the majority of their defense right yeah. now is their varsity starting uh, unit. So right now, the our Beachwood freshman and second second stringer going up against their starters and doing a pretty nice job. They sure are. End of the third quarter. Beachwood leading Walton Vernon of 48 to three. Thanks everyone again for tuning in on Senior Night. We'll join you right back here next two weeks then travel on the road for one game, come back against Bracken County to finish up the regular season. From there, how the playoffs start, and Murph, you're doing an outstanding job explaining all this playoff stuff to uh, us. Well, not tonight. Well, yeah, that's yeah, all right. No, well, you know, right. I've, I've spent the last couple of days uh, touring uh, Washington, Washington D.C. with the sixth with the graders. Sixth grade. By the way, <laughs> a, a very, uh, very hearty uh, tip of the cap and shout out to uh, fifth grade teacher uh, extraordinaire Michelle White, who yes. uh, who coordinates and, and kind of spearheads yes, the entire Washington D.C. Uh, field trip program for our sixth graders and their families. Uh, to say that she does an outstanding job will be a, a, a an amazing understatement. Yeah. Uh, what a gift to the Beachwood community, Michelle White is. And uh, if you see Michelle around town uh, coming in the coming weeks over fall or over fall break, uh, give her a hug and tell yeah. her job well done. She is awesome. What a great trip for the sixth graders and family. Have you been to Washington, oh, D.C.? Oh, yeah. I went with uh, Sam Talley's class yeah. back in, uh, went, let's see, that would have been about 2009. I was fortunate enough to go on that trip. And, yeah. yeah chaperone. I was yeah. the chaperone. Well, and they had yeah. to call the SWAT team on us, and, and that got blown out of proportion, Merv. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, know what they were doing. Completely, <laughs> over, yeah. It was, it was just a lot of misunderstanding. Yes, it misunderstanding. was. Fourth down and four. Ball spotted on the Walton Vrona nine-yard line. Looks like Bo's going to be under center. He is. Eye formation behind him. Bo gets the ball, fakes a handoff to Ayler, throws down into the end zone. Wide open Tiger receiver. Touchdown. Put him up. Don't know who caught that. Herget? Can't uh, see. That might be Sleet. That might be a Luke Sleet. Nice. On senior oh, night. Sleet. Can't see yeah, it yet. That's Will Luke Sleet. Sleet. Yes. Luke. All right. Outstanding. And now let me tell you something. That entire sideline. And the, the uh, Beachwood faithful right in front of us in the stands. Yeah. Everybody cheering uh, for Luke Sleet. What a uh, what a great way to start this fourth quarter with Luke Sleet's first touchdown of the season. 54-3 to three, Tigers, 11.43 to go fourth quarter. Think we're going to get a two-point conversion. They might take a knee here. We'll see. 54-3 is your score. Souter again under center. Eye formation behind him. I believe that's Weaver and Souter. Gets it, hands it to the first man through who fumbles, and the play is dead. With 11.43 to go in the game, Beachwood 54, Walton Verona 3. That is awesome. That is good to see Luke get that touchdown. Really nice. We're going to have a running clock here. The Tigers are, are off to a great start to this season. I mean, opening up in Cincinnati against McNicholas and coming back playing two whale of a football games against Dixie and Simon Kenton. It, after Campbell County, had a good game there, you know, easier win. Came back against Dixie, Simon, Covcat, three weeks in a row. Yeah. Had Covington yeah. Catholic on the ropes. Couldn't hold on, but, you know, so far more of a great season here. Yeah. The, 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 a little unexpected, you know, it is. You well, know? I mean, I think there were a lot of people across the state, people uh, paying attention to 2A football that, you know, were, were wondering. New head coach, yep. Yep. smaller roster, yep. uh, a lot of key senior losses. Yep. What does this Beachwood program look like? And there were a lot of people thought, all right, well, this is where we start to see a decline. Yep. Well, guess what? We hired one of the uh, one of the one of the greatest young one of the greatest young coaches in the Cincinnati area, and Jay Volker, yep. and he's come over here and just done a whale of a job. You know that, that sure coaching has. staff uh, largely intact uh, for, from from the last decade or so, and Jay Volker. I mean, they've just I mean, it's been amazing. Luke Sleet kicks it off, there we pounces go. over the Walton Verona receiver, and he's got nowhere to go. A bunch of Tigers chasing him, but he gets through it. The 25-30 out to the 35. I tell you, man, the Walton Verona kickoff team has been their strong suit all night. Takes it out to about the 26. It'll be first and 10. Walton, 10.47 to go left in the game. Luke Sleet on a touchdown pass on senior night. Leads the Tigers to a 54-3 lead. And a tackle on the play there by Nathan Papsikale, uh, Aerosmith, uh, just a, uh, again, 
nice uh, special teams play. It's amazing, Mark. Special teams, you think about, you look over all the state championship banners on that oh, wall, yeah. you think about how important special teams are, how mm -hmm. important cu kickoff coverage, punt the coverage, right upright kickers, down in, uh, Kroger goal Fields. Fields. Yeah, yeah. Goal post goal is post. our friend down there. Walton yeah. Rona comes out first and 10, ball on her own, 26. I believe that is uh, Blake Gamble back at quarterback of the freshman. It is fumble Another on fumble. the snap. Don't know who got it. A couple of guys at the bottom. I think Walton's going to keep it, but they'll lose a couple of yards there. Call it second down and 12. Yeah, but freshman Blake Gamble returning to action. We've seen uh, we've seen Gamble, uh, Avery Howe both uh, manning the quarterback position tonight. Yeah. And again, folks, uh, this 54-3 score, um, you know, while not unexpected, is, uh, you know, Walton Verona suffering a, a – uh, unusual amount yes. of season-ending injuries to key players on their roster. Uh, I do think that this this uh, this this score would look uh, would look differently if not for for those young men going down. The gamble gets a play from the sideline. Second down. Call it almost 14 here for Walton. Ball spotted back on their own 22. Chase McDaniel's uh, in at left defensive end. Peyton Morehart in at nose tackle. We'll get some other names here coming up shortly. Gamble in the shotgun, hands it to the first man through, and again, nice tackle there from the Tigers. Going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Give him about three yards on the pickup. It'll be third and ten. Yeah, Tyson Hargett with the tackle, nice. playing playing outside linebacker. Uh, Aiden Dickey at uh, middle linebacker. Nathan Parton also at middle linebacker. Brody Ayler playing outside. Cohen Henderson at left corner. Uh, safeties, Colton Craycraft and... Caleb Stein. We're going to give you a future look at your Tigers in about two years here. All these guys out here are going to be a key part of yes, the future sir. teams. Jordy Wagner, Peyton Moorhart, Chase McDaniel on the defensive line currently for the Tigers. Call it third and 11 for Walton. Ball spotted on there in 25. Gamble in the shotgun. Two backs join him in the backfield. Look a little confused, and they're going to get too much time caught on that one. Scoot them back five yards. It'll be third and 17. Well, I think one of the things that we've seen tonight, and I think we're probably going to see a lot more of it, I think uh, Coach Volker and his defensive staff are, are, are starting to put in a few wrinkles yeah. where they're moving players around. Mm -hmm. They're 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 moving, uh, you know, they're starting to move the – bump the defensive line left or right and and uh, and drop outside linebackers down to a defensive end yeah. pre snap to try to, to and, and it's worked effectively tonight to try to to try to rattle quarterbacks or offensive linemen I mean if you think about it mark if you're an offensive lineman especially an, an undersized or under talented offensive lineman the last thing you want to see is movement right yeah. before right before yes. the snap because exactly. now you have to rethink what am I doing here what yep. am I doing here where's where's the pressure coming from and the same for the quarterback because the quarterback also knows that the, the the offense line is outmatched. Quarterback, like here, we've got a freshman and sophomore quarterbacks. If you start seeing all that oh, movement yeah. with guys like Xavier Campbell or Brody Waddell, yep. that can cause Jailbreak. that can cause yeah. chaos. Yeah. And I tell you what, the emergence of Brody Waddell yeah. puts Xavier Campbell Absolutely. back on the yeah. defensive line. Well it really allows it, yeah, yeah, it allows them Some to do changing. different yeah. yeah, to do different things. So they called a timeout, didn't give them a penalty. It's third and eleven, ball spotted on the Walton Verona twenty five. Gets a snap, pitches it to the right, bobbles a ball, going to pick up a couple of yards out there, gets it out to about the 29. It'll bring up a fourth down and seven or eight. Yeah, great job by Cohen Henderson at corner uh, to, to prevent. Uh, he did not give up the edge there. Uh, also, Aiden Dickey and Nathan Parton in on the tackle as well. Ball is going to be spotted out at the Walton Verona 29, bring up a fourth down and seven, and they are in the punt formation. Lincoln Mann, who kicked the 39-yard field goal, is back to punt. Not the tallest guy. I hope the snap's not high. <laughs> the Tigers are not convinced he's punting. There isn't anyone back, but he does. Ooh, almost blocked. And the punt might have been partially blocked. Yeah. It's going to bounce around down to about the 46 of Beachwood, where they will spot it, and Tigers come back out. 7.20 to go, clock running, fourth quarter, Beachwood 54, Walton Verona 3. Who do we got here next week? Owen County next week here, right? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, Owen County, uh, you know, again, we talked about just the the way that the 2A District 5 looks in Owen County. 
Uh, they lost their first round matchup last week against Carroll County, 35 to 14. Uh, so they're kind of behind the eight ball and now have to come into come into Fort Mitchell. Uh, yeah. So they're staring 0 and 2 right down the barrel. Uh, so not great for Owen County, but first time, I believe the first time they've ever come to Fort Mitchell. Yeah, and both Souter are under center now. I formation behind him. He's going to hand it to the second man through, and that's Ayler. Ayler, yeah, nice great run blocking inside on the, right the 50, side. all the way down to the, about the one run of 47. Nice run and good blocking. It'll be about a second down and three here for Beachwood. 6.27 to go left in the game. Clock running, has been running for quite a while. Freshman team is in here doing a nice job. Throw a, Souter threw a touchdown pass to Luke Sleet on this last drive. Reds leading 8-2 to two over the Cardinals, oh, barely right. holding on to a potential wild card spot. That's so that would be a spot. big win, 8-2 to two over the St. Louis Cardinals tonight. We need the Marlins and the Diamondbacks and the Cubs to lose, Ooh. lose, lose. Okay. Souter again under center. Eye formation behind him, two receivers line up to his left. Souter again, hands it off to Ayler, second man through. Ayler cuts back to his left, picks up a couple of yards, going to bring up about a third down and one. Just got tripped up there, might have had the first down. Beautiful evening for football. Lights are on here up on the upper field as well as down here. Beautiful evening. And a good crowd, Murph. Yeah, I'm no. I, really I, nice I, crowd. Yeah, at Walton Verona, these people love their Bearcats. This community loves their, their Bearcats. There's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, I just feel bad that they've had so many injuries because yeah. this program has been so successful over the last decade. Sout under Plus. center. Hands off to Ayler. First this. down and a little bit more. Takes it inside the 40 down to the Walton 39. Brody Ayler, good-looking young running back. Runs angry, yeah, these guys, smiling, man. Smiling Woo. runner. That's, yeah. yeah, absolutely. They're spotting it at the 40 of Walton, but still give him a first down. 4.59 to go in this game. Clock running. We are in absolutely no hurry. So for those of you that might not have heard, uh, so Owen County will come to Fort Mitchell next week, and yes. then the following week we will travel to Carroll oh, County. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we'll wrap up the regular season on October 20th here in Fort Mitchell versus Bracken County. Souter under center, I formation again. Hands it to the first man through. Nathan Parton, I believe. Yeah, Parton might have gotten one or two yards. They're going to give him two down to about the 38. Call it second down and eight. Might be the last possession of this game. The clock is running. We're in no hurry. We're going to take every second that we got down to about 422 to go in, in the game. George Wilson in at left tackle All for right. the Tigers. George, yeah, George he does a great job cutting the, grass out the, there. One of the finest young entrepreneurs he, in Fort Mitchell. Dude's got a business yes, going on now. Yes, he does. George is the he, man. He, he, he's, he means business <laughs> yeah. with that business. Second and eight. Bo under center hands it again to Ayler. Going to get maybe one back to the line of scrimmage. I love George. He cuts our grass here and there. I enjoy cutting it still, Murph, so I like doing it. But if I can, if I'm too old or too tired, George takes over, man. He's Johnny on the spot. Wow. Good Another, kid. Yeah, yeah, good yeah, kid. Fine, fine young man. He was uh, – I, ha I had him in a study hall last year, and he was telling us about, uh, you know, his plans for uh, for buying up, – upgrading his equipment for his business. And <laughs> He did. Yeah. He's got this yeah. stand-up mower yes. he uses. Yeah, he, he means business, he that's for sure. Around. That's great. Third down and eight. Ball spotted on the Walton Verona, 38. Now, Bo's going to be in shotgun now, joined by Ayler in the backfield. Bo gets a snap, looks to his left, keeps looking. There's some pressure mm, now, yeah. and Walton Verona's going to get him. Sack him back to about the 45. Yeah, they brought the house on yeah. that one. Yeah, we haven't seen that. We haven't seen that a lot tonight. Uh, in, uh, the, uh, definitely on that one. They were trying to prevent any other points going up on the board, so that that's what you call a sellout yeah. blitz. Looks like the Tigers are going to probably go for it here. There's no urgency. 2.53 to go in the game. Beachwood 54, Walton Verona 3. Bo getting a play from Greg Hergen on the sidelines. They might just take this clock all the way down, call yeah, a I quick think that's timeout, exactly and punt it. Here. Think that's what we're going to do. 2.38 and counting. Mark, just taking a look at uh, you know the season Clay Hayden has, has had in, in his career. Uh, Probably, I, I'm, I think he eclipsed 4,000 yards wow. uh, tonight, um, and he's approaching 50 touchdowns for his career. Uh, just a tremendous junior season. Let's see what Bo can do here. Bo's rolling out to his right, has a man open, going to be real close to a first down, and he'll get it inside the wall and run a 30. 
And that was, believe that was 21 Patrick there. That's Weaver. Patrick Weaver. Yeah. Nice catch for him again on senior night. Senior yeah. getting involved. <laughs> and, and you can't say it enough, Mur, for a sophomore quarterback to go down and win a state championship. Yeah, you knew there, I was, mean, you knew there was something special. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I don't care who again, you are. And again, coming in late, coming, yeah, in, off oh, yeah, and, coming exactly. in off an injury. He was injured yeah. early in the season. Clay has been fantastic, man. Really fun to watch. And Bo Souter is in now quarterback. Ball spotted on the Walton Road of 29, first and 10 Tigers. 137 to go. Clock running. No hurry. Eye formation. Bo with the handoff. Second man through. Ayler going to take it down a couple of yards, kill some more clock. I mean, you, you know, and that game, too, I mean, and, you know, Flaherty stepped up. Flaherty had to come in after the injury to Berger, and just Chase had a great game. Two yeah. young guys, yeah. Flaherty and Hayden, stepping up as sophomores in a state championship game. That's unheard of. Yeah, I, I, and I think you when you, you know, we talk a lot about the players as we should, but when you when you start thinking about just the the how for years it's just the next man up, yeah. and they're always ready, Martelli. Yes, they're always ready. They're always prepared. That you tie to the coaching staff. Yes, it does. And this coaching staff now with Jay Volker at the head of it, just uh, again year after year, best coaching staff in the state of Kentucky. But when the shot or uh, under center hands it to the first man through. Going to pick up about a yard, and we might be at the end of it here. We're down to 41 seconds. By the way, I just want to say, Bo Souter, you might have noticed that in this in his time tonight, he's completed he's completed passes to four different receivers, yeah. uh, and he's 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 tucked and run the ball very effectively. That young man is going to be a star when he uh, when he and becomes the starting varsity quarterback, which yeah. I think he will. Uh, just an excellent, excellent young football player. Going to be fun to watch, and that is going to do it tonight. Last play of the game, Beachwood 54, Walton Verona 3. We're going to come back here next week against uh, Owen County. Hopefully get an update on that score, Highlands and Dixie. Hopefully get some good news because if Dixie continues to win, if Dixie beats Highlands tonight, that helps us in the RPI huge. That would yeah, be a no, huge absolutely. help. Absolutely. And Simon Kenton just keeps winning too, and that will keep helping us. And that's really all that we can do. Play who's on our schedule, yeah. win every game, to, right? and got to get absolutely. some help. Yeah. Because, again, it, again, you have to remember these are kids, right? These are yep. these are. 15, 16, 17 year old kids. Sometimes they can, you know, they can have off games and sure. they cannot, you know, they can see a, a a either a team that's just not really, a, you know, good or having a good season, or a team that comes in like Walton Verona that's good, but has substantial injuries, yeah. and think, ah, oh, well, we can take the night off. That never happens here. Yep. That never happens here. No and that's doubt. why state championship banners are hanging across the field from us now. Now I think Brody. If I had to bet 20 bucks, Brody's got Austin's jersey on. 54, dude. Old uh, Austin's jersey surprise. looks That's like a, it, man. It really does. That's it good. Really does That's good to here. see. So Austin, hope that you're out there too, man, having a good uh, year. So with the win, Beachwood uh, moves to 6-1 and one on the season, 2-0 uh, and oh in District 5 play. Uh, Walton Verona with the loss. They fall to 2-4, and four, and they also fall to 0-2 oh in the district. So we do not have the final scores from our other district, uh, uh, district opponents, but uh, we'll pay attention uh, cl to that closely, and we'll talk more about, uh, you know, what the postseason is, you know, how that's crystallizing. We'll talk more about that and what the, what the first three weeks look like yeah. um, next week as, as we gain clarity yes. on that. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, another another great win, 54-3, to and, you know, we saw, you know, we, we – we saw exactly what I'm sure Jay Volker and that staff wanted to see. We saw the you know, the the young man put the ball in the end zone as they should have with with ease. Defensive defense executed, and uh, if not for the fantastic you know, 39 yard field goal by yeah. Lincoln Mann, it would have been another shutout. So, uh, great night. Uh, I don't. I don't. I, I've been watching, and I didn't see any injuries, which yes, is great because good. the last thing you yep. want is to is to lose anyone in, in games like this. But. You know, again, we saw some we saw some uh, some different wrinkles defensively that maybe we'll start to see that, and maybe you know, uh, you know, we gave up a lot of points to to some teams early in the season. Maybe we'll start to see a little bit more, you know, pre snap movement and yep. some position flexibility from some players to kind of shore up any any defensive, uh, you know, shortcomings that might be a problem right now. Jim sure. Volker, defensive coordinator for this team, and and very takes it very passionately, very seriously, very personally. Uh, and I and my guess is Mark Talley, that by the time we hit postseason, this defense is is like the offense going to yep. be clicking on all cylinders. They look fantastic tonight. The pressure yeah. was remarkable. And again, Brody Waddell and Xavier Campbell both played fantastic football games yes, tonight, bringing did. that pressure. Nice to see Xavier Campbell you know, playing both middle linebacker and defensive end so they can utilize that pass rush. Yep. So, again, it's allowing him to pull out 
you know, and one of his most prized possessions in his hol his holster, so to speak, that pass rush. Yep. Uh, excellent. So, and you, great night. You look at our offense. Going back to our offense, you've got Fryman almost averaging 100 yards a game of five touchdowns. Urban, 84 yards a game, 27 catches, 10 touchdowns after tonight. You've got James Cusick, who does a great job catching the ball out. I mean, you've got three guys, plus Flaherty comes out on flares out of the backfield. You've got four guys yeah. who you can throw the ball to yeah. who are good and get open. Yeah. Erdman is a track star. Yeah. No one can cover that kid. No. So it's like you send Urban on, on a go route, good luck. I mean, yeah. it, it, this is going to be, be fascinating to watch this season, how how it plays out and how good this offense is. I tell you, folks, you get a chance to come out, check these guys out on oh, offense. Oh, there's no doubt. There's they no doubt. are whizzes. It's this, incredible. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun to watch. Before we uh, – we take off just a couple of score updates. Yeah. Come and then, on, and then, Dixie. Uh, tell me something uh, good. Cooper, 41-7 to over Connor. That's a final. Yeah. Uh, if you get, for, for those of you with uh, with uh, that have a chance, you might want to check out uh, Cooper, Austin Alexander, Cam O'Hara, Isaiah yeah, Johnson. Good team. They are, they are fun to watch. Uh, Highlands, 51-21 to ah. over Dixie. Highlands ah. surging. Yeah. Big They're a good team, there. man. Yeah. They're getting better. It's good to see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any other final – uh, Northern Kentucky scores on here. Covenant Catholic 56 to six over Grant County. Let's see if we use a Somerset score. Let me get this real quick here. 28 to seven Somerset. The bar jump. I see now. Okay, 35 to seven Somerset with 4:42 oh. left in the third. So that is important as we look towards the postseason. Um, and it looks like those are the only finals so far from uh, from uh, Northern Kentucky. But a lot of action tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pay attention to uh, the RPI once it's yes. released overnight, see what that looks like. I, I don't <laughs> see us. I certainly do not see us coming out, you know, out, of, the, out of the fourth spot. Yep. Um, that would be a major disappointment, but I don't see that happening. But we'll pay attention to that. We'll talk more about that next week mark yes sir great job tonight thank you sir same to you you survived also, washington dc i did Murph. i you did look good man. i did hey well i don't know about that but <laughs> but uh kudos to uh a couple of uh a couple of kudos first of all to our sixth grade uh staff of um um warriors uh, that's yeah, sixth grade that staff. Is, no, you, you better believe it uh, <laughs> uh in particular jane gasser uh uh uh, Kara Hansel, Brian Williams, Pam Kaler, Christy Stevenson, and of course, uh, uh, all thanks to the great work and the passion project that Michelle White has yes. undertaken for more than a decade she now is great. of taking sixth graders. Mrs. To, White, love you, man. Uh, taking sixth graders to Washington D.C. That is no small job, yeah. and she does it uh, with class and with excellence. So uh, again, a blessing to this community, Michelle White. Uh, also, congratulations to our seniors that were celebrated tonight. Yeah, uh, we uh, we salute you, and uh, we have loved Mark. I mean, you think about it now; those seniors were fifth and sixth graders yep. when we started doing yes, the sir. radio so we've sure we, has. we've seen we, them. we've watched them grow up yeah, it's hard man. to believe they're they're seniors but the good news is we don't have to say goodbye just yet because we got a lot of we got a lot of fun ahead yes we a lot do. of a lot of weeks of football and we got some great games coming up and uh, excited to be a part of it mark Dowie. no doubt about it thanks everyone again for tuning in on senior night your final from 54 beachwood road Beachwood 54, Walton Runner 3. See you next week right back here. Same time, same channel. YouTube and MIXLR.com. Mixler, YouTube. TigersOnTheAir.com. We'll TigersOnTheAir.com. Tigers yes, yes, Thank you for clearing yes, that up. TigersOnTheAir.com. Yes. Thanks again for everyone tuning in. See you next week. Let's go. Go Tigers.